Hello, my loves. Welcome or welcome back. I'm going to try that again. Hello, my loves. Welcome or welcome back to Chemistry with Kismet Tarot. I am Monica, the Kismet Chemist. And in today's reading, we are going to be getting messages about your crown chakra and helping you get connected to spirit. So I want to start with a story because it just popped into my head. I just kind of had that whole situation replay in my mind. About a week ago, I was upstairs with my husband and we were talking and I was cleaning my kitchen and all of a sudden I heard except there was nobody at the door and it wasn't it wasn't knocking it was like a peck a peck so as I'm cleaning the kitchen I come I went and walked by the kitchen window and there was a bluebird that was perched right next to my window and it was tapping tap 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 on <laughs> the siding of my house now granted I initially thought it was a woodpecker but woodpeckers aren't blue and I was not aware at the time that blue jays actually do knock on windows they they will land and they will knock on windows and and it's an announcement of peace and harmony and blessings and it was such a beautiful beautiful experience and moment and this awareness that Hey, it's spirits knocking, spirits calling. It's time, it's time for me to answer. I had been struggling a bit, um, and this is a this is a pattern. And I think the reason why I feel called to share it is because some of you may be going through a similar thing. Um, one of one of my patterns is I will finish a book <laughs> and publish it, and I'll have this huge energy like depletion time and I have all this inspiration and I'm rearing to go for the next one but it's my body is like mm -mm, no way in those moments our our minds can get ahead of ourselves we can start wondering well maybe I did the wrong thing maybe I'm not on the right path maybe there is something I'm missing here did I did I make a mistake did I make the right choice did i make the wrong choice all of these things in our minds can go and go and go and at the same time when our minds are doing that we miss the of spirit saying it's okay we want to give you some rest time we want to give you a break we want to give you this chance to reconnect to you to reconnect to me to reconnect to your guides, to reconnect to your body and this world, and to just take a break, take a breather. I don't know about you guys, but I have so much fire energy in my chart, and I am predominantly cardinal signs, so I have a hard time with this take a break and take a breather energy. Um, but this time... I really leaned into it and I said you know I'm on this energetic slowdown this happens every time I publish a book I published two books in in a month and I knew it was time for me to slow down to give myself a break to do the things that I love um, crocheting sitting here and sharing stories with you guys and doing readings for you guys these are the the things that I love to do on the side aside from my writing As I, as we move more into Mercury retrograde, and granted this is a timeless reading, but at the time that I'm filming, we did just enter into Mercury retrograde in May of 2022. So as we move further into this retrograde season, this retrograde cycle of Mercury's, with it happening in Gemini, hitting critical degrees, really hyper emphasizing these things, all of these mindsets are being just, it's almost as if they're being ripped 
out of us by the root, which is great. It, it's wonderful. If something's going to be ripped out of us, we want it to be by the root because now we're able to see the root cause of it. But those are the moments where our minds are going the loudest and spirit is trying to come in and spirit comes in in silence, comes in in a whisper, comes in in gentle flowing winds and easy babbling brooks. This is how spirit comes in and when our minds are in chaos and turmoil, we can't hear. So today we are going to hear what we haven't been able to from spirit. I would like to walk you through opening up your crown chakra, opening up to receiving with your crown chakra. So if you could close your eyes and then take a deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. And aim to fill your abdomen up with the air as though you're filling your whole belly with air directed directly into your solar plexus chakra. Now with your eyes closed, I want you to... <coughs> Imagine your favorite flower, whatever flower that is. Picture your favorite flower. Now picture it as a bud. It's not quite open yet. It's springtime. And put that bud directly on top of your head. This bud signifies your crown chakra. Now I want you to take a deep breath in. And then release. And as you breathe out, picture the flower, the bud of the flower opening. Watch as the petals pop from being curled into itself. Watch as they pop open, springing into freedom, seeking the sun. As it fully opens, I want you to imagine this beautiful beam of white light coming down and shining directly onto the face of that flower. As it hits the flower, you can feel the roots of the flower moving down it through your head, your crown chakra, and it's as though there's a rush of freshness moving through your mind, settling, calming. Take another deep breath in. And as you breathe out, imagine that those roots go all the way down. Go down to the bottom of your feet and into the ground below you. You have now rooted your crown chakra energy all the way into your root chakra. Take a few minutes. I'm going to put on some music. I want you to be connected to this energy. Allow it to flow through. As you allow it to flow through, listen for a number. One, two, three or four whatever number you hear or perhaps see without your eyes you'll see a number pop into your clairvoyance or you will have this deep knowing of a number one through four that is the pile that has been calling to you that is spirit calling and is ready for you to pick up the phone so you guys can talk. I will leave you to connect.
connect and I will see you at your piles. Hello, pile one. If you chose the first card, you chose the card number 31 and peace. Let's open this reading with an intention. Spirit and spirit guides for pile one. I would like to set the intention to help bring clarity bring peace, bring hope, and a deep understanding for my pile ones. May I be a conduit for your wisdom, your advice, your guidance, and your love so that pile one may feel it and move through this difficult phase they may be in. Thank you. Okay, pile one, as I was preparing and getting everything set, tapping into the energy, there were a few things that came up. First, first thing that came up was um, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and I haven't watched that movie in years. Some of you may have just recently watched it or have been thinking about it, um, hearing, you know, the hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work we go. And kind of, I got this feeling of I'm ready for a slowdown, I'm ready for some peace. And there's almost this reflecting back to the year 2020 with, you know, the, the shutdown and, and how it, it was like a break. Of course, it wasn't an easy time frame, but there was this sense of break and after life started picking back up you had to go back it's like I had to go back I just saw 222 on my clock so 222 fours may be important to you um however the feeling that I got was and, and I was hearing the other song that I heard in my head was Snow White and One Day My Prince Will Come, except that what I was hearing was an alternate lyric, and it was One Day My Peace Will Come. And it's almost as though you're doing the same thing continually, but you can't stop yourself from hoping that you'll figure out why you don't feel at peace and what you can do to get there. I did hear <laughs> this influx of crystals. Some of them I'm familiar with. Some of them I am not. However, they just kind of flooded in. You may feel drawn to them. They're spiritual meaning and healing purposes may be something that you should focus on or that would help you moving forward. Um, some of you may have just recently bought one of them, um, especially this bottom one, which I'm not really sure what it is, but that's what I heard. So I'm assuming that that's right. And some of you may just have been having repeated messages relating to one or more of these crystals and I'm hearing passing it off, passing it off. Um, 
and then I'm seeing somebody like passing a basketball almost as though you are getting these repeating messages and you're sending it to somebody else as though you think that you're getting it for someone else but they're really coming in for you which makes sense because they came in to me and I'm passing it to you um, so their correlation can be made there so I would understand what was going on but the ones that came in were sodalite rhodonite carnelian or carnelian barrel and chrysoprase or chrysophrase i am not entirely certain so i didn't want to do any kind of googling or anything like that when these things came in because i wanted the essence of it being there for you guys sometimes i will look at it and then I don't know, I guess for me, <laughs> I feel like I'm kind of cheating you guys if I go and look it up. So I want you guys to really go on that journey if you feel called to it. This may not resonate for some of you, the crystal aspect of it. However, if you do see this popping up in the next few weeks, um, I'm seeing three to seven, three to seven weeks where all of a sudden now it's there <laughs> that spirit saying okay maybe maybe it's time to return to these crystals so maybe just make a note of it um put it on a post-it note put it like on a mirror or a wall or even i'm seeing somebody writing it down and then tucking it into a drawer and just kind of forgetting it and then it just pops up randomly so you know whatever suits you whatever you choose to do is what's right for you the other thing that I can't heard coming in was Keep It Up by Rex Orange County. And that is a channeled song. I will include a link down in the description box for you so you can go and listen to it if you are so inclined afterwards. Pay attention to the lyrics. Um, it is a song I'm, I'm deeply familiar with. I absolutely love the song. So it did when that came in for your pile after all of the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs stuff. It did help me understand where you're at because I do know where, what, what that feels like. It's the, I'm going, I'm going. I'm, I'm still trying, I'm still going. I'm, I'm still fighting because I want what is right for me. And even though it isn't appearing in my outside world, I believe in this. I believe that this peace will come to me. I believe that this will be something I will find and I am being drawn to the flower opening just like we sat down and we did that if you didn't if you did not join me for the intro if you just automatically went to the pile when this reading is done I strongly encourage you to go back because it will help you understand the intense symbolism with you picking this pile and what spirit asked me to lead you through in the introduction. Um, but I heard after the reading. So I'm not entirely sure why spirit doesn't want me to tell you. I'm seeing the two of swords in my head. So, okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get a, a kind of view at what it is that is making you feel as though there is this long journey to find peace, um, what advice there is to be found in the outside world. This is more of the tangible, the physical element of it. And then we're going to shift into, um, I have the wild unknown, tarot and animal spirit and archetype cards which are the ones that I love to use to really get deeply connected to spirit. So we will do this one first, which is, you know, what's going on in the world around you and, and what may be impacting you in your perspective of whether or not you can continue moving forward and why there is this struggle to find peace and how it is creating this overwhelming noise that makes it hard for you to hear spirit and then we'll get some messages directly from spirit for you guys so let's start up here these are the soul journey cards so we have freedom i possess the power 
and the free will to create my own happiness. And then we have judgment. I understand that everyone has their own unique paths and challenges. Um, I just heard, um, I'm sick of being judged. I'm tired of being judged. I want to be free from everybody else's opinions. I just want people to see me for me. Why can't people see the true me? Um, <laughs> why does the world work the way it does? Why is there so much negativity? Why does everybody feel as though they need to... And then you can fill in the blank from there because it, it kind of spirals. Um, so I do I, I talk about this, this mental spiral pattern that I have. I want to say that I talked about it in something spiritually catchy. I may have talked about it here on my channel before, but when I was working through shadow work um, last Scorpio season, there was something, a pattern that I never realized. And for some reason, I'm actually seeing, I, I'm like seeing it with these sparkles here over the, it almost looks like there's a spiral pattern to it. So essentially the point is, is there would be some sort of like, really small thing that would happen and my brain would go into hyper evaluation mode so for instance I asked my daughter to run an errand um my husband said something to my daughter it upset my daughter now I didn't think my daughter would you know run this errand and I was in mental breakdown mode and so in my mind I went 20 steps ahead to all the work it would take to calm somebody down, to talk everything out, to go through all of this when I'm the one having a mental breakdown. So it's my, this is on me to go and, and handle this errand. And, you know, it's, it was a, essentially me finding a way to be able to verbalize mom guilt and how it actually works and how it actually looks, especially in the realm of trauma and and how to actually get that out to show somebody what it looks like. Heightened anxiety coupled with, you know, a multitude of different things. And so it was really like the spiral downward. One triggering event would happen and then all of these things would spiral downward. And I would not be able to control that spiral down. And it's like somebody would set off and uh, one of those, you know, courses that they build with marbles that do these amazing things but it's like that in your brain and I'm watching it spiral downward and I'm powerless to stop it to the point where I just throw in the towel and say okay I'm going to do it but then I feel this intense disruption inside because I'm judging myself and I feel judged by others and then I feel trapped and I feel like I can't find peace and I can't find freedom I apologize pile one I had a mishap I had to walk away for a minute but I what I was saying was I felt as though I I couldn't find any freedom there was no peace to be found and in reality what it was was it was my own mindset it was me trying to people please it was me staying silent in the midst of all of the chaos and being very, very, very tired and not taking care of myself the right way because I was too busy taking care of everybody else. And that is a noble thing, but it's also a very destructive thing. And I think I'm telling you this because I feel like you guys are too hard on yourselves. You, you expect so much of yourself you put yourself on a pedestal you put yourself to these higher standards and it's not as though you are when I say pedestal it's not like you're trying to say that you're better than anybody else no you put yourself to such a high standard and you say I have to live up to this image this impression this person and you're not giving yourself the time to sit down and say well who am I to judge myself? Why am I judging myself? How am I being kind to myself? And then sitting down and saying, Spirit, can you please help me? Can you please work with me? Can you please help alleviate this? Please help me understand. 
to find your peace, you have to allow yourself the belief that you can be free of your own judgments and those of others. But the first step is freeing yourself from yourself, from those negative thoughts. Let's take a look over here. We've got Archangel Fanuel with hope, optimism, and new beginnings. And we have Guardian Angel, you are not alone. I love that. Um, some of you may have been seeing feathers, but I was, I was going to say feathers, and then I heard butterflies, um, white butterflies. Do they make, is there such a thing as white butterflies? I know there are white moths, but are there white butterflies? That'd be pretty cool. Um, somebody watch The Little Mermaid recently? Hmm. Touched by an Angel? That's a show, right? I think. Um, and then we have Water Guardian, Connect With Your Emotions. And the card 39, relaxation, peaceful pursuits and happy times. Okay, so number one, there's a dual message going on here. There's this, you have been going through a lot. You have been dealing with a lot and it's, it's weighed you down. It's weighed you down a lot and you i get this sense that there is you allow yourself to feel certain emotions but you're not completely connecting to your emotions and you're not connecting to your emotions because you've been working so hard and it has made you feel completely and utterly alone you're not giving yourself any relaxation time because your entire focus is right here on this hope and optimism and new beginnings and that was something that I did feel was despite the feeling that you have had such a long journey, you have had such a hard journey that it has been heart wrenching so much that you don't want to feel your emotions. You have not taken a single step by yourself and there's this like overwhelming sense that you feel like the world is preventing you from being able to relax, from preventing you from being able to move forward, from making you feel as though no matter what you do, it's never going to be good enough and you're going to be judged. But in this case, there's so this strong energy building in the outside world I'm seeing like the the pullback of the ocean when there's going to be a tsunami or a tidal wave. This pullback of the ocean and what you don't realize is it's pulling back and you're standing here on the shore and, and you have felt this pullback, but this pullback to you has felt like the world withdrawing from you, peace withdrawing from you, spirit withdrawing from you, but really what it has been is this build and build and build of all that you've been doing this build up behind here and now it's going to be rushing in and it's okay to let yourself be emotional during this phase of pullback I'm seeing a swing and and you know how when you're swinging as a kid you have to pump your your legs you have to pump your legs to keep the swing going there's a calling here that this peaceful pursuits is like pumping your legs you want and and the new beginning feels like when when you're a kid and you jump off the swing and it's almost as if you're flying through the air um so yeah there's there's this essence of take a break from the world take a break from whatever it is that is continually weighing you down because you do deserve peace and it is your time and you're not alone. And as soon as you connect with your emotions, your inner child is waking up and, and I, I'm just seeing somebody swinging. This feels really positive, but I also feel the sense that it, it 
is it true is it is it really true can i can i trust it this time i i don't like making false promises but i want to tell you what i feel and what i'm seeing and what i'm hearing is that yes it's real this time and and i can feel the build up and i can feel what's coming but i can also feel the doubt i can feel the insecurity i can feel the hesitancy so let's take a look at your reiki um, healing cards here and find out what you can do to help get yourself connected to your emotions and trust a little bit more in this peace and freedom coming in for you so the first one is honor yourself we need to respect whatever job we have chosen for ourselves and to honor ourselves by doing our best to create a feeling of satisfaction in that work all work is valuable to the extent that we choose to value it remember that you are your life's work that means that this is this was absolutely the essence with the the snow white and the seven dwarves is that everything that you've been doing just feels it feels so heavy lately it feels so much it you don't feel that joy engaging in it because because the spiritual community says you have to do this or do that or whatever it is but it's not about the job that you're doing it's about the energy you put into it and maybe maybe you are doing something creative like for me i went through a phase with my tarot channel where i was like oh i have to film because I wanted to stay consistent, because I wanted to commit to it, because I wanted to keep moving forward, but I had lost the luster, I had lost the love, I had lost the joy, I had lost the sparkle that it was when I started doing it. I don't, I, I can't even tell you what it was that shifted. It was just a, a sense of, okay, it's not, it doesn't have to be that way just because I see this as my job. It's also my hobby. It's something I love. It's something where I am blessed to share my gifts with the world. I see it in, in such a multitude of ways that I know that this isn't the only thing that I do. This isn't the only thing that I am worth. This isn't, this isn't it. This is one piece of the puzzle. And so I can put my all and my best into it share that with you all and help bring more light into the world and i don't have to i don't have to look at it the way that i have for so long as a nine to five job or or something like that i can see it as something different sometimes even if we're working in a nine to five job it's about being able to say okay you know what i did this and it helped this situation or this person or something like that. One of the most satisfying, one of the most beautiful, like heart opening moments for me was when I worked a telecom customer service job from home working on insurance medical insurance claims and I had a woman who called me and her son had gotten into this horrible accident and he wasn't at his local hospital and the injuries he had sustained were so extremely severe it was one of the most heart-wrenching stories I've ever heard and he needed a specific surgery with a doctor who was out of network now, a doctor out of network on a surgery of the magnitude he needed it, it runs a bill of a couple hundred thousand dollars because of how expensive these procedures are. And it was kind of like she, she didn't have a choice. She had to do what was right for him. And she was calling me as the customer service agent saying okay but i got this bill in the mail but this is what i was told by the hospital this is what i was told by the doctors i this is this is i had to do this it, i had to save my son's life and i may i put her on hold i made some phone calls i talked to a couple of different agencies 
I explained the situation. We cross-checked all the information, all the doctor's notes, all the medical, everything. And I was able to get back on the phone with that woman a half hour later. She waited for a half hour on hold while I went on this journey for her. And I was able to get on the phone with her and tell her that I had guaranteed and had watched it get processed that this bill was no longer (laughs) there, that this bill was covered by the insurance, that there was an error, that we fixed it, we covered it for her, and I got to listen to the hope that her life was not going to crumble down around her, flood back in. I was blessed with the opportunity to make a few phone calls and type a few things into a computer and change someone's life from being in a state of despair to hope, to happiness, and to be able to refocus on what matters. Her family, her son, his recovery process. I hated, (laughs) I hated that job. But I carry that memory and that day with me in my heart because I was able to help someone with something that was so profoundly damaging to her state of peace and her sense of freedom. And all of it literally ties into this pile because it was somebody else's judgment that she had to go based off of. And it was the only thing she could do. And... I was the one that was lucky enough to be there to take her phone call. But can you understand here why Spirit wanted me to share that? I disliked that job deeply, intensely. It was not fun. It was stressful. There were long hours. There were tech issues all the time. It it was not a it was not an enjoyable position and Even after I left, there's been a long litigation battle with a class action lawsuit with them because of failure to pay. So for a a position like that, that was that stressful and that suffocatingly damaging to my peace and my sense of freedom, I still carry that one moment, that one woman's story and And what I was able to do and how I was able to help her, I carry that in my heart, I carry that in my mind, I carry that in my soul because that day I got to change a life and it was through my work. What stories do you have about your job where you have made a change that has changed somebody else, that has helped somebody else, or that has changed or helped you? personally that you can't see because of the weight of constantly feeling like you're going at like you're beating down a brick wall sometimes we can shift our perspective to see the blessings in the harder times so let's take a look at your other card it says a wise prayer an old irish prayer author unknown Take time to work. It is the price of success. Take time to meditate. It is the source of power. Take time to play. It is the secret of perpetual youth. Take time to read. It is the way to knowledge. Take time to be friendly. It is the road to happiness. Take time to laugh. It is the music of the soul. And take time to love and be loved. It is the path to joy and contentment. Happy times, peaceful pursuits, new beginnings, optimism, hope, taking the time. You are your life's work. The peace that you're seeking already exists within you. All right, let's get some quick messages. We're just going to clean these up real quick. All right. 
Spirit, what do we have for Pile 1? What advice do you have for Pile 1? Spirit, Pile 1, what advice do we have for Pile 1 moving forward? We have the Six of Cups. Okay. The Six... Uh, guys, the Six of Pentacles the lover's card which is also the card six the ten of swords is there one more spirit <laughs> and the wheel of fortune <sighs> wow okay so we have six 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 ten ten sixes and tens so sixes are about harmony about balance unconditional love healing deep healing so this is essentially what i'm what i'm seeing here is essentially this is saying you can look to the past look to your roots to understand to find to find awareness but the balance and, and harmony that you're looking for the peaceful resolution, the growth, the abundance, it comes down to you making a choice. Birds of a feather flock together. So I don't know. I just heard that birds of a feather flock together. And then I'm hearing like the mighty ducks, like flying V, flying V. Okay. So when, when ducks and geese are in the flying V or even the mighty ducks, are doing a flying V, they switch positions to who's leading, to where the puck is. They work together. They work as a team. So this is saying that your roots, you're, you're grounded, you're solid. You understand the past, but especially this specific Six of Pentacles is like they're tiny little buds, just like, again, just like the intro we talked about. It's the tiny little bud. So now it's coming down to it's time for you to make a choice. If you're unhappy where you're at, make a choice to move out of that. You may feel as though you're stuck in one path, but you're never stuck unless you allow yourself to be stuck. And the Ten of Swords, granted this Ten of Swords is horrendous it's absolutely horrendous but the thing that strikes me the most about it is it's a bull and we're in Taurus season so this Taurus season may just have felt very heavy for you you it may have or even the the partial solar eclipse that we had from in Taurus that would have been a week ago or, or a week and a half ago April April 30th so almost two weeks ago it may have brought up a lot of things for you to become aware of, but it is time for you to move beyond it because in the Wheel of Fortune, when you when you look at the progression of this, in the Wheel of Fortune, we have a crescent moon, we've got an owl, but we've got this wheel and it looks like a medicine wheel and the strings are kind of tangled. But the thing is that I see is at the core, you've got the red string. So this is about at the core, at your root, you have this red string. And as it spreads out, it starts weaving into different colors, different levels. All of this, there is so much about your chakras and alignment. This is about making the choice for balancing. There... And for leaving certain ways of believing behind, but also understanding that the things that have hurt you in the past or the moments that have seemed so challenging and so difficult in the past, they were there because it was something you had to experience to understand what, what karma is or destiny or fate or even just the fact that you're not... You're not cursed and you're not unlucky. You are on a journey. You're on a journey. And the journey to find peace is never an easy journey. 
not in, not in the 3D world that we live in. It's just not an easy journey. We have this stingray, which again, see the chakras. This is exactly what I keep saying. And every time I see the stingray card, I don't even remember what the book says about the stingray card at this point, because that card to me is 100%. You need to get your emotions aligned, your chakras aligned, your energy centers aligned. Somebody may have just recently gone through a kundalini awakening or is going to be going through a kundalini awakening. This is like chakra everything. This is creation, creativity. And the only thing that I see that is like making this challenging is the, the way that you view the past. It's not even the past. It's not what happened. It's not your mindset. It's the way that you perceive it. That would be why a spirit wanted me to share my story about the woman with her son. Then we have Hawk. And a Hawk is... A hawk is a predator. A hawk will circle in the sky and wait and watch and track its prey. And then it'll make a move. It will not do it ahead of time. It will not do it when the circumstances do not suit it to be absolute and exact. A hawk has a bird's eye view. It has a higher perspective. A hawk is deeply connected to spirit. But a hawk knows when to move, where to move, how to move, and will not deviate from that. So this is saying to me, with a stingray and the hawk, and especially right here, the bat is the other one that we had that came out. The bat, who does not use their eyes to see, to find their place to move in this world, a bat goes based off of sound, instinct, intuition, feeling how the sound feels when it comes back. It has nothing to do with their physical eyes. This is saying that when you move, when you balance and align yourself and you move in an instinctual manner, you will know as though the divine has come down and given you the image of the exact time, date, place, situation, circumstances, what to wear, like in exacting detail, just like a hawk would see what to do, where to move, when to move. And if you trust in what spirit brings to you, if you make the choice to trust and to move from love, to shift how you see things and allow for Allow for the universe to work with you instead of you working against it. Moving into a state of balance, of harmony, of peace. That's your path. This is about listening without, without your ears. Oh, I just had a whole bunch of them fall. That is too many. All right. Spirit, can we get an archetype card just to close out what archetype can pile one harness all right so we have the animal and again this talks about instinct knowing when to move oh my gosh you guys the lover is on the back and we have the lovers here you guys have one of the most synchronistic piles i have had in forever numerologically like spirit speaks here Spirit speaks here. I love it. All right. The animal. This is what spirit is saying. Your instincts, your intuition, moving from the heart, moving from this place that you can't explain, but that you know is within you, this wildness, this freedom loving piece of you that is beautiful. That, that part of you. When you move from that place, when you flow from that place, when you trust what you're shown, what you feel, what you hear that has nothing to do with your eyes, your nose, your ears, or your mouth, or your brain. It just is a feeling, a knowing, an understanding, a vision without your, your eyes. When you're moving from that state, everything, all that all those new beginnings, all those 
pieces that you want to be harnessing in your life start flowing together. Pile ones. Spirit is saying, let yourself have some fun. Let yourself shift and change how you see it. Bring more balance in to you, to your life, to your chakras. Balancing things out, seeing things from a higher perspective and moving forward in an intuitive way, an instinctual way, instead of plotting and planning and and checking all the different anything. Move with spirit because spirit will move you. Pile ones. This has been very in-depth, very deep. I'm very honored. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to Spirit for bringing these messages forth. Thank you to my guides and your guides for facilitating the connection so that I could bring these messages forth today. And if this video resonated, please hit the like button, share it out, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell up in the corner so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And feel free to check the description box for all my fun little links to books, programs, donations, private readings, the whole nine. All right. Pile ones. Keep going. Listen, feel, move with spirit because spirit believes in you so much, so much and is so proud of you. And so am I. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you all. Bye. Hello, pile two. If you chose the second pile, you chose card 29 and spiritual awakening. Before we get into the messages, I want to open this with an intention. Spirit and spirit guides for pile two. I would like to set the intention for the messages to come forth today to be soothing, to bring laughter, to help pile to see the humor in the chaos and the confusion so that the clouds may break and clarity may come in. Thank you. Okay, pile twos. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, please don't get upset at me for laughing <laughs> because uh, I, I was picking up so much as I was preparing for your pile and it was all over the place. And I, right before I sat down to hit the record button, I heard um, <laughs> Professor Quirrell from the the first Harry Potter movie and I heard him go what is this magic and I couldn't help but laugh because it it's almost at the point with your guys's energy where you have to you need to allow yourself to laugh it's been too serious it's been too much it's been overwhelming and you need to let yourself laugh um I also was hearing the song Tiptoe Through the Tulips by Tiny Tim, which is one of the most off-the-wall songs ever. I had this fondness for it for some reason. But I was hearing it in my head. And I think it's mentioned in the second Harry Potter book, actually. Or the first one. The first one. Where um, Uncle Vernon is like closing up all of the ways that letters could get to Harry. Now that makes sense. Okay, so, and as he's doing it, he's whistling tiptoe through the tulips. I also saw a scene from the movie Insidious, which is a horror movie, so if you're not into horror movies, you know, obviously don't watch it. They are some of my, it's one of my favorite, okay, no, let's not lie. It's my favorite genre of movie. I just, I love them. But in that movie, there's a scene where she puts on, she has music playing in, in the house. And all of a sudden, you can hear the record scratch and it 
turns on tiptoe through the tulips. And the woman is taking her garbage out and she looks back and there's this boy from what looks to be like the 1920s or so, maybe even earlier than that. He's wearing like a little fedora hat and and short shorts with suspenders and whatnot. And he's, you know, tapping his feet and, and dancing along and her kids aren't home. So it's actually a spirit that she's seeing, you know, running around. And it scares her a lot. It's just this little kid who wants to play hide and seek and he's giggling and, and whatever. But it's it's shocking to her because she's not used to it. Um, and she doesn't understand necessarily what it is that's going on. She thinks she might be going crazy. She's seeing things, all of these things. And she thought it was the previous house they were living in when they moved. She thought it would stop and it only got worse and she just couldn't understand. So all of this plays in. The other thing that I got was... Alice in Wonderland, the movie, but live action. Because, and I asked Spirit, like, why did I need to specify live action, especially with the Johnny Depp stuff going on? Like, obviously, if you know me, you know how I feel about the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial. But I was like, this is, it's almost controversial for me to put this movie up here. And Spirit's like, no, we need controversy here. No, you need to see this aspect of it. And the reason why the live action was very prominent in Spirit, for the most part, I don't think many of you have seen it at all or seen it recently. And Spirit really would like you to watch it. Because with this movie, Alice goes to Wonderland and... I get the sense that we all know the Disney movie version of it, and this is still a Disney movie, but it's the live action. It turns what we see in in cartoon form realistic. And if you notice, that flame just started jumping when I said it. So it turns these cartoon ideas into something tangible, something physical, something real. So we can actually see how it feels it's almost like a movie representation of how you have felt. And I feel what I'm feeling is like the spiritual awakening stuff. Like, when does it stop? When does it end? How? When does it get better? When does it alleviate? When does it not feel like I'm going crazy? Number one, number one, you are not going crazy. Number two... <laughs> I can't answer that because I don't know that it stops. It eases. You begin to understand more, but the more resistant you are to it, the more you think, well, I must be crazy. This can't possibly be happening. It's got to be something else. Maybe I'm sick. Maybe I have a brain tumor. Maybe I am schizophrenic. Maybe I have just gone off the deep end. We live in a world that's full of chaos. So it would be understandable to have like a complete and utter nervous breakdown. Th those thought processes amplify amplify the, the fear that you have within you about the gifts that are awakening within not everyone has the gifts that you have. Not everyone is able to see the things that you are able to see. That doesn't make you crazy. It doesn't make you wrong. It doesn't make, and it doesn't have to make you special. If that's not how you want to feel about it, you don't have to feel that way. This is about understanding that as you go through a spiritual awakening, each of the chakras are going to open up. So you're going to go through different challenges. And I feel as though your chakras have been kind of popping around in different places opening up. It has not been, you know, a lot of people talk about Kundalini awakenings and they talk about either your your heart chakra blows up or or you feel the the energy at the base of your spine and it just shoots up and through all of your chakras and then you have this profound mystical experience. It is not always that way for everyone. Sometimes it pops around from place to place because you need to deal with certain things for everything to be able to go in a specific order. So not everybody goes through a kundalini awakening. Some spiritual awakenings do not match what anything else 
is out there and yours is not textbook textbook because no spiritual awakening is textbook but yours does not follow the norm the pattern of the norm which is why you've been struggling with finding somebody who understands because it hasn't always been easy but it hasn't always been hard but it hasn't always made sense and it hasn't always been clear it it hasn't been clear because it doesn't make sense per what everybody else says or what is out there and spirit is saying this is because when you decided to come into this life when you incarnated into this life one of the things that you wanted to experience was something that would bring you to a community bring you to a a place in the world where you would understand them because a lot of your experiences would be similar but you would have to learn how to define it for yourself for what it was for you because it does not match anybody else's and that can be very frustrating it can be very upsetting it can make you feel kind of like I am just going to board up every part of me where my gifts might come out, where I might be able to hear spirit or hear spirits or connect to. Some of you may be mediums and just not wanting it. And so there is this essence of that that Uncle Dursley energy of I'm just going to board it all up because if it, if it can't come in, then they'll go away. It'll go away but it won't go away. If you don't know what I'm referring to, go read Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone or the Philosopher's Stone for those viewers of mine that are in the UK um, or in, in Europe, just in general. But go read the first book and I believe it runs through the third or fourth chapter is is where this occurs i want to say it's probably the third chapter but the correlation here is that because it doesn't match and you can't really find any resources for it you are like alice stuck in wonderland all these people get each other and you can relate to them in some way shape or form but nobody is quite like you and you are not like anybody else but there are other people all around you that have all these similarities. Just like when Alice falls into, I'm seeing Alice falling into the flower bed. I think they're pansies or something like that. And they all sing and they're all the same flowers and, and they all understand each other while they, it's a group within Wonderland. So all of Wonderland really resonates with each other, even if they, there are smaller segments of it. And then there's Alice. And you are like Alice. But the best thing about that is I'm doing a collective reading. I'm doing a reading for a group of people, which means there are more Alices out there. They may not even have any idea, the same as you, how to draw the parallels between each other. But this reading gives you the opportunity to see that there are other people in Pile 2 and interact with them. So now you can start seeing that there is a possibility to have that, that faction, that smaller segment within a larger community because you're welcoming in people who may or may not understand you, but you're also welcoming in people who get what it means to not be understood. Wow. <laughs> wow, guys, that this is... This is profound and intense and I kind of understand it and I kind of don't um wow so we're going to get some messages directly from spirit here for you guys this is your pile is a deeply internal internal energy internal messages internal and <sighs> I don't, it's not issues, it's not concerns. There's another word that, spirit. I can't, it, it's kind of like energy, but it's like this. I 
I'm hearing the word bastion. It's like your inner light you have it you have it completely protected and then you put a sh a shield or a barrier around yourself because you have been battered and beaten and broken and bloodied by the world by interacting with the outside world to the point that you don't like to interact or you you at this stage right now you being here is rare you being here is something that you're like well i'm not doing this anymore but you can't ignore the call. And I get this frustration for that. But you have put up a protective barrier to stand bastion to your inner world. Because you don't want the outer world to impact you anymore. Um, which is why spirit wants to talk about your inner world. And how it's impacting your crown chakra. And what you can do to be more open without being negatively impacted and positive and negatives are they are words that we give we give meaning to based off of whatever connotation we want to they don't necessarily have to mean good or bad i don't personally believe that there is such a thing as good and bad i think that there are some actions that are not right to take I think that there are there are ways in which we move and we speak and we treat each other that are based off of positive or negative intent, but it doesn't make anybody inherently good or bad. So we have the Five of Pentacles and the Mother of Cups. And see, this is what I was saying. It's, it's almost as if you are depriving yourself of getting in touch with your intuition, of taking care of yourself, of allowing your gifts to awaken allowing yourself to be the swan to be psychic you're depriving yourself of that and it the five of pentacles because we're talking about your inner worlds so this is very important distinction and i just saw an orb of light guys um this is an important distinction is we're talking about your inner world so the pentacles refer to what's going on internally they aren't actually tied to the physical world. We have the magician. Okay. So the magician is really your turning point. It's it's what you can do to understand. Um, and if you look with this specific magician card, there's a cheetah and it's standing on the pentacle. So this is like um, overcoming that feeling of deprivation or... Or choosing to no longer hide away the resources that you have within you, your psychic gifts, your psychic knowings. Um, no, okay. All right, that was too many. Um, if they want to come back out, they will come back out. But it's it's choosing this state of of. I'm going to just dry it out. I'm going to let it dry out. Um, Spirit's saying it's, that's not going to work anymore. It's time for you to harness it, to fill your own cup up, to understand that you are you are Alice in this situation for a reason. Just like Harry Potter was chosen to be, he was the chosen one. I mean, he didn't choose to be the chosen one. Voldemort literally chose him to be that position it he was marked as that but he could have run away from it he could have ignored it he could have chosen to go a different direction and used it against others or he could have allowed himself to step into the role he was meant to by knowing that he would have the support and have what he needed taking care of himself while being able to take care of others and weaving magic into the world or protecting magic, saving magic. But nobody wants to feel different. And if you say, yeah, I love being different, kudos to you. But we live in a, a world in a society that is all about let's be, let's conform. And it's this is not me saying you should conform. I am saying I know how hard it is to break out of conformity, but I also know 
that nobody really wants to be completely and utterly different from everyone else in the world. Because if you are completely and utterly different from everyone else in the world, how can you ever possibly fathom connecting to anyone else in the world? And this is, this has been a big hang up for this pile is I feel so different. How am I supposed to connect to anyone? Spirit, what do we have aside from the magician? Do we have anything more? Okay. We've got the Son of Pentacles. Huh, I've seen this card before. Very rarely has this card ever popped out for me, though. Um, I, I almost never see it. And then we've got the Three of Wands. Okay. Um, so we're going to... We're going to go with the magician here. So the magician is really telling you that it's time for you to own what you have within you and to know that when you own that, no matter how different you are, no matter how much you feel as though you don't quite match up with other people or whatever it is that, that your hang up is, I it feels like I could go, go through this big long list, but it's almost like, have I not heard it enough enough times? Like, spirit, let's go. Like, I don't want to listen to that. I get this intensely rushed feeling with you guys, um, which I can handle, you know, ADHD, woohoo. But <laughs> I just heard, I kind of like you. Um, <laughs> whoever thought that, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I like you too. <laughs> Okay, first of all, the Son of Pentacles. You know, you think about Bambi. I, are you guys like huge Disney fans and, and kids movies stuff and whatnot? And like sci-fi fantasy stuff? It, is this your forte? I mean, we should be friends if that's the case because me too. But <laughs> with Bambi, the... Son of Pentacles, what it reminds me of is when Bambi was with whatever his girlfriend, I can't remember. Did, did his girlfriend ever have a name? Um, but when they were together and he came across another young buck and they had to duke it out head to head and then there was crashing lightning in the background and it was also very dramatic. Okay, this is kind of like saying um, you have the ability here... <laughs> to harness everything within you and 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 allow yourself to reconnect to the outside world with your s spiritual gifts and because you have this cheetah representing you when this son of pentacles comes at you because you can see them looking at each other you can see them looking at each other when that son of pentacles comes at you you have a choice do you want to go head to head with something that is not, it, it, it's just not something that you resonate with. It's not something that is like you. It's not something that is for you. It's not something that you care to engage with, but it's there and it's coming at you. But the thing is, is you're the cheetah, which means that you can see it coming at you and you can move a hell of a lot faster. So you can get around it. You can jump on its back if you choose to go do that direction. Like that's obviously your choice. I'm not going to encourage you to do that. But when somebody comes at you who is inherently different from you and you know what you hold within and you allow yourself to engage in a manner in which you step forth firmly into what you hold within without depleting it because you don't want to, I don't know, this this five of pentacles again, it's, it's like you're initiating the five of pentacles. Even the mother of cups is blaming it. <laughs> like this rose and see when I look at the rose I think of Beauty and the Beast and how it was wilting and the, and there was a time frame and it's kind of like you're you feel like you're you're done with this time frame and oh there could be something that's winding down as well as far as this this leg of the journey is winding down and if you would allow yourself to open up to your gifts you'd be able to touch into that now this is not me making judgments I know I can actually hear the tone of my voice I can hear it um plus I got this fun little warning from my guides in my left ear but it it's the energy that I feel is like you need somebody really firm this is what I call my 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 mom voice 
when I'm talking to my kids and I want my kids to understand that I'm being serious and I'm not joking around and and this is a genuine serious conversation this is how I will change my my demeanor because it's time for them to listen this is a heed the warning kind of thing you're coming to the end of a specific phase in your spiritual awakening journey along this phase you have suffered a lot of of lack of defeat of being beaten down and it has led you to feeling so different that you can't connect to the world now the problem with that is is that you're blaming something else somebody put a curse on me somebody did this or somebody did that and you're not realizing that this is an opportunity for you to step firmly into the infinite nature that you are to understand that you have throughout this journey you have gained you have gained you haven't lost you have gained every perception of what was lost has been a gain and yes it can feel like it has been the slowest journey ever but what i'm seeing here is literally when i when i told you i the Sun of pentacles does not feel like you it doesn't feel like your energy it feels like spirit saying okay it seems like somebody's taking taking aim at you in some way and you need to remember if somebody comes at you you're the magician you're the cheetah you can leap over and when you leap over you literally will put yourself straight through a portal so it's about not engaging in this kind of battle when it's not a battle for you to engage in we, i want to go back to the alice in wonderland and the correlation of alice being different than everything else in the world if you live in a world full of deer and you're a cheetah you're alice this is saying if you're alice go through the looking glass leap over the sun of pentacles go through the looking glass and allow your life to change allow your perspective to change because when alice went through the looking glass in the second movie she did that because she wanted to go back she, she found out and here's the best part is as much as you feel Alice felt so out of place in Wonderland in the first mo in the first movie when she came back to her world she found that she was out of place there she found a way forward there but she still was out of place there she was mocked she was told she was crazy blah 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 whatever but she found it she found herself feeling more at home in Wonderland than she did in her own world sometimes we can feel like complete and utter outsiders in an in a world full of outsiders <laughs> and then we go back to the world where everything seems to be perfectly normal and then we find out that we resonated more with the outsiders than we did with everything being perfectly normal and this is an opportunity for you to take a leap into something different and see that you are Alice. You fit in wherever you choose to fit in. You can make it work wherever you want to, but don't you want to be where you get to be yourself? And there's nothing to be afraid of. At all. Like, at all. Like, at all. I, I, that was really weird. It was like I got stuck on skip those walkmans did anybody have a walkman i had a walkman you know the anti-skip feature they lie if you know what i'm talking about let me know down in the comments because yes i had one but i used to take it like when i was out riding bike or um <laughs> i would tuck it into like the waist of my jeans and go for a walk throughout the city but you know when you set it up on its side even though it has an anti-skip feature, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I am not really sure why that came up, but um, we have this stingray. Oh, I apologize for hitting the microphone. Uh, some of you may have been called to pile one. If you were, go check it out. Um, but what I'm seeing here with the stingray is it's the same that I always see with it. Is It's about aligning your chakras. Uh, let me know if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure a stingray is one of the only sea creatures that they... No, I don't want to say it that way. Um, 
a, a stingray. It's a special kind of sea creature that has actual vertebra in its back. Um, I could be wrong. I definitely could be wrong because I don't know a whole lot of anything about stingrays beyond the fact that it killed, uh, what's his name? Steve Irwin. Wow. I apologize. I apologize. I feel affronted by the fact that I forgot his name for a minute. I, I apologize. That was terrible. The man is a legend, was a legend, still is. But with this stingray, it's all, it, the only thing that ever catches me about it is the alignment of the chakras. And, and this is what I was talking about. You may not have had, you know, the traditional kundalini awakening. But do you want to live in a world that is this desolate, this dark, this like defeating? Because that is a huge theme with the Five of Pentacles, the Mother of Cups, the Son of Pentacles. Like the Mother of Cups is saying, if you look here, this is the problem. And if you really let yourself harness what the truth is, now you can see all the magical pops around her. You're the magician, which means... You all you have to do is come out of that darkness. And the same thing when I said like you get to choose. Do you want to go through the looking glass or not? The looking glass literally is a world full of color. It's a world full of color. So in that way it, it's like the Wizard of Oz. You know Dorothy gets caught up in the tornado and she goes from living in black and white to living in, in Technicolor. Do you want to live in a world of black and white or do you want to live in Technicolor? Put on your dream coat and, and dance around life. Let this be a moment where you choose to be like, okay, well, the spiritual awakening journey really, like it's been really rough, but I don't want to block myself off from my gifts anymore and I don't want to hide away from the world from what I want to do or who I want to be. I'm going to harness it. I'm going to leap. I'm going to take that step. I'm going to go through the looking glass and I am going to live in a technicolor dream world. We have the earthworm. And the earthworm, you know, the earthworm, if you think about an actual earthworm, they fertilize the soil. They dig it up and they, they break it up. But an earthworm will come out when it's raining. And an earthworm can also split itself in two, like it can be cut in two and it's regenerative. You can, you can lose pieces, you can lose people, you can lose things, you can lose projects, you can lose a path, you can lose yourself and you can still regenerate. But now is the time to really allow yourself to see the Everything that you've done, all the work that you've done, all the things you've been through, when you open yourself up completely to it, instead of fighting it, instead of battling it, instead of feeling like, well, there's no point because I'm stuck in this state and this is the problem. So you're, you're fighting what is natural to you. When you, when you stop doing all of that, what you're going to see is the journey that you have undergone to get here, right here, right now, to get here, to hear this message, even just the journey to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to take this leap and I'm going to jump through this looking glass or through this portal or I'm going to jump over this hurdle. I don't care if my foot catches on the bottom of it. I'm going to jump over this hurdle and I'm going to move forward into what is the dream. And the dream, quote unquote, the dream, that depends on you. It's not my dream, it's your dream. The earthworm has been sitting there fertilizing it this entire time. Bring yourself into alignment and allow your crown chakra to really open up fully. Step into who you are. Let yourself be weird. Let yourself be unique. Let yourself be you. Let yourself be Alice. Let yourself be different. Be Harry Potter. Be the chosen one. And say, I don't give two Fs about it because I'm going to be this because, well, maybe spirit chose it for me. Maybe I chose it for myself. It doesn't matter. 
because at the end of the day, the choice has already been made. I'm already here. Now I'm tired of living in black and white. I'm tired of living in a world filled with black and white and bullshit. So now I want to live in the world of color. Give me the Technicolor dream coat. I am going to dance my way into history. I want to be Alice. You know, if we're all mad here, why not embrace it? You know, you think about the Mad Hatter and he just embraced being mad. So if we're all mad here, why don't we just embrace it? All right. We have the self. See? Do you see here? This is just like the earthworm. The earthworm has been fertilizing, but the, the self talks about the pearl of who you are. You have this beautiful, brilliant nature of who you are. And as that's all it takes. Harnessing it, choosing it, being it. Look how much this reflects this. It's like you want to experience a heart chakra opening. You want to experience your crown chakra opening. Choose to experience it. Say, okay, spirit, I'm ready. Let it happen. Um, and I, I'll be completely straight up front with you guys. I did this. I talked about it in something spiritually catchy, my newest um, self-help book. But <laughs> I went through I went through something in in January of 2020 where I was like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to accept my gifts. I'm I'm here. I'm ready. I'm open. Give it to me. Show me whatever. And as soon as I said that. There were orbs of light everywhere. I could hear somebody saying my name and in my clear audience. And I could see a spirit pacing back and forth at the end of my bed. And I was like, too much, too much, too much. Oh my God, too much. Turn it off. Make it go away. And I have, I have spent two years building, <laughs> building myself back to being that open. It was like I was this naive little kid just just like throwing open the door in the middle of a tornado like, hmm, okay, let's see what happens. And it was utter chaos. But it gave me a glimpse into the the magnitude of what I I may be able to experience and touch and and live in my life and at the time it was terrifying. At the time it was too much. At the time it was too heavy. And now it's like, okay, whatever is going to open is going to open when it's meant to, but I'm going to keep going forward on my path. And then we've got the prayer. Again, I get this sense that you guys are connected to pile one somehow. Um, you know, maybe this is this is where you're headed. Like pile one is is where you're headed after this. Uh, there's just a little bit of a, of the same essence. But you know what? There's a lot of correlation between energies going through the collective these days. So, yeah. I don't know. There's something that's just kind of, it's there and then it isn't. But the prayer is all about what it is that you have been speaking up into the heavens. What do you want? What do you see for yourself? Do you see how... As we talk about going through this portal, as we talk about embracing who you are, as we talk about moving forward and choosing not to engage in the things that have been bringing so much conflict because it's not something for you to engage in anymore and you do have the ability to just bolt around it without it even noticing. Do you see how we're getting more and more color coming in? Okay, this is... <sighs> It's like coming out of the dark, coming into the light, embracing who you are, embracing what you love, embracing what you want, and knowing that it's okay for you to have it. We can get in our own ways. And, and the more that you try to board up the ways that spirit speaks to you, the more that you're going to see what happened at the end. And if you don't know, spoilers you can either mute it or whatever but spoilers if you don't know or if you do there was nothing but hundreds and hundreds of letters coming pelting at them through the chimney 
flying all around the house and cut off half of Uncle Vernon's mustache with its speed. And he still didn't get the memo. He still decided to run away. But at some point, the giant comes knocking at the door and says, you're a wizard, Harry, and you can't ignore it anymore. And then it's time to step into destiny. So now it's time for you to let yourself step into destiny because I get the sense that some of you have been praying for yourself to go back. There is no going back. There's going forward. There's learning. But when you go back, it's not what you think it will be. It's an illusion. And you don't want to live a life of an illusion anymore. And I can feel that really strongly. But you're afraid of what not living the illusion would be like. Which... It's understandable too. And even spirit understands that. And spirit is spirit is immensely patient. Our our lifespan to spirit is like there isn't even an equivalent, but it would be like a million billionth of a millisecond to spirit. So but spirit still loves and cares about us. But our time is way skewed in, in comparison. Like spirit can be patient with you. We all could do with taking a leaf out of Spirit's book with patience. Oh, you wanted to come out. We have beneath the surface, hidden truths, something unknown. That's what I said. You guys, you guys have this, this gift, this blessing underneath the surface. And it's card 31. Guys, 29, 29, and then 31. And pile 1 was card 31. Like, you guys are somehow connected. But at the same time, I don't even, I don't want to say go back and watch it or anything like that. Because I, I don't, I don't necessarily feel like that's the case. It just seems like there's some sort of connection between, them. maybe it's just that you guys are hoping for peace in this process, which is understandable. And then we have the card three with sensitivity and strength, tapping the forces within. <laughs> Do you see this right here and how it's shaped very similar to this? Spirit <laughs> Spirit is coming in and it's just, it's so clear cut to me. It's so obvious to me. Um, and I feel like it's obvious to you as well. That you know you have something within you. You know you have something deep within you. And it's time for you to really get in touch with those forces within you. But you have to be willing to do so. And it, and it does. It comes down to it. There was at one point in your life where you said a prayer. You said something. You spoke out these words and, and it came from your heart. It was this sense of like, I just, I want to understand. I want to know. I want to feel seen. I want to feel heard. I, I want to feel as though... I'm not going crazy. I want to feel as though something in the world makes sense. And the problem is, is the more that you are afraid to allow yourself to tap into yourself, to tap into what you have within, what you carry within, what lies beneath the surface of, of who you are and what you present to the world, the less you're going to be able to see the truth of who of your own beauty and, and who you are and what you can do and what you're here for. But you are the magician. And that prayer was heard. That prayer was heard because I get this sense of like, obviously it was heard, Monica, because I'm sitting here listening to you and for some freaking reason this resonates. And there's this grumbling, almost frustration because you didn't, you you almost didn't want another, another pick a card to come in and resonate with you. You didn't, you didn't want another synchronicity because then you'd have to actually sit down and face the fact that spirit is speaking to you and you have been ignoring it and now is the time where it's time for you to answer the call that is actually i think it's your guys's energy that actually inspired this pile or not this pile but this pick a card the titling the caller id spirit like it's time to pick up the phone um that it came in last night but your pile specifically feels like one of the biggest focal points for spirit with helping me tap into the theme of this reading is answering spirit's call. You said a prayer, spirit answered, and you shut spirit off. 
fear or worry or shame or guilt or whatever reason, now spirit is calling. Now spirit is saying, you said this prayer. It's time for you to understand. It's time for you to step into who you are. It's time for you to own what you have hidden within you. It's time for you to step firmly into how you are a sensitive. You are a sensitive person. You are an empath. You are a clairsentient. You are clairvoyant, claircognizant, clairaudient. You have many, many gifts deep within you. But they are your strengths. They are not your weaknesses. They make you who you are. And because of that, you are here to save Wonderland in one way, shape, or form. Because you're Alice. I did not miss the fact that Alice was the hero. That's who you are. So Spirit wants me to give you guys some empowering questions. I want you to take some time. Screenshot when we get all three questions on the board. And reflect on them. Journal them. Do something. Make yourself accountable for you to get yourself out of the mindset that you can't do whatever it is you think you can't do because you are Alice. These questions Spirit picked for you are meant to help strengthen you, help empower you, help you understand yourself, help you open yourself up, and help you see what the hidden truths are buried deep within that are preventing you from allowing all manner of communication from spirit to come through and it is i just it feels so important for you right now on this part of your journey to let this communication come in so we've got the first one is am i focusing more on what my life looks like than on what it feels like and this, again, is that Mother of Cups pointing at the Five of Pentacles. Doesn't matter what the perspective of it is based off of somebody else on the outside. How do you feel? Do you feel like you? If not, dig a little deeper into just a yes or no on this, guys. Dig deeper. Don't be glib. Be real. Be honest. And then we have what kinds of routines or habits limit my experience of everyday life. And now I'm hearing tiptoe through the tulips again. I'm just going to leave this one as it is. And then we have would I be proud of myself if I spoke to other people in the same way as my thoughts speak to me? How do my thoughts speak to me? And this is, not again, something that, you know, we've talked about, like, you see yourself as so different and so, and, and you see yourself as though you can't do these things, but if you keep telling yourself that, you keep limiting yourself. How do you speak to yourself? Are you kind to yourself? Do you lie to yourself? Are you honest? Are you loving? Are you giving? Do you speak to yourself the way that you speak to the people that you love? How do you speak to yourself? All right, pile two. Oh boy, this was a journey. I feel like I feel like I went through the looking glass on this one. I really truly believe in you, pile two. I do. And I do want to say thank you for being here because I can feel that sense of, I, I definitely felt that sense of like, why am I here? I said I was going to not do this anymore. I'm sick of this. I appreciate you taking the time to listen. I know it wasn't easy for you to fight that aspect within yourself and stay long enough to get to the end. You, you did good and I'm proud of you. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you to your guides and my guides for facilitating the connection. Thank you to Spirit for my amazing gifts that I get to share with the world and share with the collective and share with Pile 2. And thank you, Spirit, for bringing these messages forth for Pile 2 and helping Pile 2 know that you're still there knocking on the door and that their prayers are heard. 
Thank you again, Pile2. If this resonated, please hit the like button, share it out, hit subscribe to my channel, hit the little notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And right down in the description box, you can check out links to my books, to my program with a coupon code for 75% off, links to donate. And if you would like a private reading, there is a link to my website down there as well for bookings. So Pile2, answer the call. I believe in you. Thank you again. I love you all. Bye. Hello, Pile 3. If you chose the third card, you chose the card of meditation, which is number 32. And before we get going with the messages, I want to take this time to open up and set an intention. Spirit and Spirit Guides of Pile 3. I would like to set the intention <clears throat> for clarity, for guidance, for awareness, for understanding, and for an inner state of calm and connection for Pile 3. May your messages help illuminate what they cannot see. Thank you. Okay, pile three. Some of you have been here before, some of you have not. And for those of you who haven't, my stance on meditation is that we engage in meditation in a multitude of different ways. And there are times when we need to return to a state of meditation, a state of reflection, a state of contemplation, and allow for us to reconnect with our inner source, our inner guidance, our inner light, our inner knowing. And for your pile especially, I get this feeling that there is a need to do a kind of cleansing meditation. Um, as I was connecting with your energy for this pile, the book The Hobbit, There and Back Again, was very prominent in my head. Um, I was seeing the book cover, I was hearing the Misty Mountains, and I the essence of this book being brought to the forefront is based off of a journey that you've been on. Now, the thing with The Hobbit is Bilbo went on this journey, this long journey with dwarves. And along this journey, he was separated from the dwarves and he came across Gollum or Smeagol. And they engaged in a battle of wit, a battle, a riddle battle. And while they were doing this, Bilbo had come across the, the ring, the ring of power, Sauron's ring. Bilbo won the riddle contest and escaped. Later on, during the Fellowship of the Ring and the Lord of the Rings series, Bilbo has changed. He, he ages, but he realizes that after the journey he has been on and the adventures he has engaged with, even though he came back to the burrow and or not the burrow that's harry potter he came back to um middle earth and to his quote unquote hole in the ground he came back to hobbiton that's that's the name of it hobbiton it didn't it wasn't really so much about the fact that he didn't really fit in because what he did was frowned upon what it was is that 
when he went on this journey, when he allowed himself to have an adventure, when he allowed himself to break out of what everyone else around him had always done and what they always believed was how it had to be and how they were supposed to act, how hobbits didn't like adventure of any sort and were very content with the lives they lived. When he allowed himself to be caught up and swept up during the Hobbit there and back again, he went through an inner transformation. Now, give me one moment. Okay, I just had to readjust my microphone. I, I get the sense that you have been on a journey. And I will always say, not every journey we go on is out of our door. Sometimes we go on a journey of discovery, a journey of awareness, a journey of understanding, a journey of growth, a journey of spirituality, any kind of journey we can go on where we're at. We can astral travel, we can meditate, we can have visions, we can, in the day and age that we live in, we can actually go on these grand adventures from the comfort of our home. So it's about the perspective that you have, but what I get is the sense that this pile specifically has been on a long journey and you have now come back to yourself, come back to your normal life, come back to a deeper state of awareness, but also a sense of groundedness and you're having trouble assimilating. So assimilation is when someone from another culture moves somewhere and they have to learn how to meld what they came from into what they are in now. You are trying to learn how to meld what you understand on a spiritual level with the physical world. And there's a struggle that I can feel with you on that where you, it's almost as if you want to escape back into where it was before because you're not entirely sure what to do with everything that you've learned, everything that you've been through, everything that you've done. And without knowing where to go from here, it's kind of like you feel lost. Dragged into the middle of something that isn't yours to deal with, it isn't yours to handle, and, and you don't quite know how to get yourself out of it. That's why I get the sense, especially with this card and the way it looks like it's fire swirling around her. And she's all dark and then right at her center is a light. It's as though you need to get in touch with your inner light again. And a fire, a fire meditation is a, is a cleansing meditation. It helps clear your energy and clear your space. So we're going to take a look at some meditation techniques that will help you. So that you can reconnect with spirit, um, kind of clear out that crown chakra and, and reconnect with your inner knowing so that you can see what way to move forward. Before we get into the cards, spirit did have advice for you. Solfeggio frequencies are um, sound wave frequencies that you can listen to. You can find them on Spotify. Um, Apple Podcasts, I believe. You can find them on YouTube. You can find them in a multitude of places. The ones that came out very prominently were 417 hertz, 528 hertz, and 963 hertz. And I believe 417 is the solar plexus chakra, 528 is the heart chakra, and 963 is the crown chakra. So it it seems as though there's there's just this cleansing and clearing that needs to be done between these. And then connecting through theta waves. Now, theta waves are the wave length that your mind goes into right before you go into, I believe it's REM sleep, but it also is a deep state of meditation that you can go into. So for me, when I hit theta waves, my clear audience becomes significantly clearer. I'm able to hear the different voices of my guides coming through instead of it just being words floating through my mind. Um, I'm able to more easily see 
my clairvoyant visions as though it's an actual movie playing out instead of just kind of brief glimpses and then a knowing of what it is that I'm seeing. Gamma waves, on the other hand, are going to help you focus. They, they are great for studying. They're great for creation. Gamma waves are the wavelength that monks work on. It's the ohm waves. That if you're not one who is drawn to traditional meditation, which I feel very strongly a lot of you are kind of resistant to that, and I understand that because I tend to be resistant and we attract, you know, similarities when we're working in the world. So if you aren't drawn to traditional meditation, say you've like, you have, you know, ants in your pants, so to speak, you can't sit still necessarily. Um, gamma waves will help you connect to your higher self. It will help you get realigned to your crown chakra. But if you go in this order, what I'm hearing is if you go in this order, like make a playlist of some sort, go in this order, it's going to help get you rebalanced internally so that you feel less like an outsider in the outside world and more like you can handle just about anything because there's an inner state of knowing that you're moving towards. And when you move towards this inner state of knowing, it can be a very big challenge in the beginning because it's kind of like an uphill battle. And it, when you are back from a journey, like a, a spiritual journey, similar to The Hobbit, and the prospect of another uphill battle is not one that you want to engage in. So spirit wants to help ease that for you today. So again, these are suggestions. These are notions and ideas that I am channeling. It's going to be different for everyone. You're going to take to it or you're not. Use your discernment. If something clicks with you and you're like, oh, theta waves sound exactly right, but the other ones don't, then you may just be someone who needs to hit those theta waves more regularly. So take what resonates because this is about reducing resistance dramatically so that you can re realign with yourself and with spirit and understand that assimilation or integration does not have to be the uphill battle that it feels like it needs to be right now. So we're going to take a look at these two. These are um, Harry Potter magical meditation cards and these I wasn't <laughs> I was using them for my own personal meditation this morning and as soon as I touched your card I was like oh those would those make perfect sense and it was like this rush of yes 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 so when I meditate I journal I journal for my meditation practice there are times where I don't meditate every day. There are times where I will use a different method. And I've got both candles. They're just going crazy right now. So this is, this is a confirmation from spirit and your guides that this is a good idea. Try, trying a different way of meditating. Um, but when I meditate and I, I journal, it helps clear my energy. It helps clear my mind because I just let the words flow out of me. Alternately, there are times where I can't even get a word in edgewise with my own mind enough to be able to clear it out. So in those moments, I'll sit down and I'll crochet or I'll do Sudoku or I'll do like fill in word puzzles or crosswords. Usually not crosswords because they require a lot of focused thinking and I'm trying to minimize how much I'm utilizing my brain. I'm actually trying to kind of shut it down a bit. So crocheting helps, Sudoku helps because it's just method. It's methodical, it's routine, it's something that I'm used to so I know how to work it and I don't have to put excessive thought into it so it gives my brain a break and that means it gives the monkey mind a break and so it stops feeding the monkey mind and the anxiety brain. These are all techniques or methods or ideas for you to take, to meld, to assimilate into your life in whatever way feels right for you. But let's take a look at these meditation cards. 
First, we have resistance, and it says, As I told you once before, Mr. Potter, naughty children deserve to be punished. Professor Umbridge, Harry Potter, and the Order of the Phoenix. Okay, before I continue, first of all, I have never been more angry, more frustrated at a book than I was at Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. I have literally, like, screamed and stomped my feet like a toddler, thrown the book across the room, and been so mad, all because... I am 100% convinced that Professor Umbridge is the worst character in history. Just had to, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> soapbox. Anyway, <laughs> Professor Umbridge is the nasty and ruthless professor of defense against the dark arts in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Though she is really a spy for the Ministry of Magic, Professor Umbridge delights in the power she has over students, subjecting those who defy her to terrible abuse. In a courageous act of resistance, Harry and his friends form Dumbledore's army to study defense against the dark arts on their own. Have you ever had to deal with an authority figure, a teacher, a boss, a parent, who abused their authority like Professor Umbridge? What sort of acts of resistance did you take to handle this situation? Okay. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to keep these on the screen. Here, I will move this up for you if you want to screenshot it but what I just heard was um, no when I was going to start talking about it I heard no so this is something that is a deeply reflective question that spirit wants you to not have any outside influence on so I am not going to weigh in on this one or the flights of fancy when spirit is clear cut with me, I I definitely adhere to what the advice and what the guidance is. So we have flights of fancy and it says, Felix Felicis is known as liquid luck. It is a highly advanced potion that renders the drinker lucky for a set period of time. It isn't strong enough to overcome serious magical obstacles and it can be extremely toxic in large doses. However, when used correctly, Felix Felicis brings good fortune and, as Harry discovers when he takes some in Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, a feeling of euphoria to the drinker, as if everything will come out all right. If you could take a dose of Felix Felicis, how would you use your run of good luck? What would you do? Okay. Okay. All right, so these are things for you to contemplate. Um, and I'm going to leave these alone. It, <laughs> I almost feel like I'm being tested by spirit with your pile because I have a lot of thoughts on this, but there's a sense that this is these are areas that you really need to address internally. And if somebody leads you on that internal journey, are you really going on the journey for yourself? For instance, with the Hobbit, the when when Bilbo and Smeagol were together and going through their riddle battle, the dwarves weren't there. They weren't partaking. It was just those two. If the dwarves were there, would there have really been that backstory of of Smeagol? or Gollum and Bilbo enough for there to be the discord of him with hobbits that led to the Lord of the Rings and the events that happened. Outside influences can drastically alter the course of our lives if we allow them to. So spirit does not want me to weigh in. And that's why I understand better. Thank you, spirit. All right, so these are um, angels and ancestors oracle cards. And I got this sense that you're being surrounded right now. And that is why they fell the way that they did. So we have night. Be brave and honest. Star ancestor. Follow the voice of your soul. And hunter. Track down your fears and desires. Okay. So the focus here, when 
as you're moving forward, when you are clearing out, there's this need for you to to really courageously face your inner world, to understand what it is that you want, what it is, what what fears may be lingering. But like I said, with this internal light there, it there's this feeling that you need to reconnect with yourself, with your inner knowing, with your inner guidance system, and and get yourself back aligned with being able to hear and be guided by your higher self or at least be in communication so that you guys can talk and discuss these things when you're going on a journey when you come back as much as we like to believe that when we're when we come back to ourselves and back to our normal lives and back even if it's just from vacation that that something will be different or that you know a on a spiritual journey in particular, when you go on this journey and you you feel like you've finally come back to yourself, there can be this belief that, okay, I'm done now. And it's an illusion because more often than not, the journey we went on was the journey to dig up what was internal. And when we come back, now it's time to sit down and face them. Now it's time to listen to ourselves. Now it's time to truly be courageous, be brave, be honest with ourselves and figure out what we want for ourselves. Instead of allowing another person to dictate what it is that we want, it's about determining where we want to go from here and how we want to heal the pieces that are left over from the journey. And I don't know if you guys have been watching the candle flames. Uh, yours is like one of the first piles. I think it. I noticed it in one other pile. But with your pile especially, these candle flames are flickering majorly on and off throughout this. And that to me tells me that there is a lot of confirmation from Spirit about you understanding that now is a time to go within. Now is a time to rest. Now is a time to reflect. Now is a time for healing. And it, it, I keep hearing assimilation, assimilation, assimilation. This is a time for you to take all the pieces that you've learned about yourself, all the gifts that you've awakened, but also the really difficult things that have come out and the way that you have either jumped into a dream of yours or run away from the dream of yours and what fears are blocking you from moving forward? What desires you have are creating tension within because of those fears? And then ask yourself, be very honest with yourself, ask yourself and sit and let yourself listen. There is this sense of be still, be silent, let let the the messages come in, let yourself hear the messages, let them illuminate for you because they come from inside of you so let's take a look at these soul journey cards we have patience i accept that everything happens in divine order and then we have friendship i understand that a friend is in my life for a reason okay so again it, it feels like it feels like spirit is saying Right now, I'm asking you to have this patience, to have this slow down time, this stillness, this silence, this going within time. Your friendships that are there are not going to go away. They will understand if you need to take this time for yourself. And unfortunately, and this is my opinion, this is based off of my experiences, but this is something that I feel very strongly about is... If you are doing something that your inner voice is telling you to do, that your soul is telling you to do, that spirit is leading you down, and it is something that takes you out of the friendships that you've been engaging in, your friends will either be patient and allow this to happen and wait and know that you'll come back in the time that you need to come back, or that friendship was not meant to be in your life. And it is, it, it can be very hard, but sometimes when those things fall apart, we have to be patient and we have to wait and we have to let ourselves understand why the friend was in our life. What did we learn? 
what strength did we gain? What wounds do we need to heal? What happened? What is our opinion? What is our belief system surrounding friendship, surrounding our ability to have friends, to be friends? And allow ourselves to know that it's okay to be patient with our own healing and our own growth process and know that we don't have to rush it in order to engage in interpersonal relationships, especially friendships. Because you and your inner world matter first and foremost. If you don't take care of you, if you're not honest with you, if you don't heal what's going on with you, the friendships that you have will be those based off of brokenness, based off of sadness and and trauma and codependency. And if you allow yourself to be patient and, and go through the healing and ask yourself these questions, even if the, you don't use these specific questions, but you get the gist of what they're asking you. If you allow yourself to be very honest with you, And be patient with yourself. Be patient on this journey, on this healing portion of it, this assimilation, this integration period. The friendships that come in afterwards are based off of wholeness, off of interdependency, off of love, true love, divine love, unconditional love, which means that anytime you need to go into hermitude mode, which is what I called it today to my friends, Amanda and Jesse, anytime that you need to be like, okay, hey guys, this is this is the mode I'm in. I'm in hermit mode. I'm in work mode. I may be quiet, but don't, I just want to let you guys know. A real friend like them will be like, okay, let us know when you're, like if you need anything, we're here for you. We love you. You know, check in if you want to. Things like that, but they're not going to push me to engage. They're not going to downplay the fact that I need to do this they understand because they go through their own phases and I don't do that to them I give them their time their distance their space to do what they need to do and we come back together when the time is right it's about being patient and understanding that a true friendship is there for a reason it's there to either teach you or it's there to help you reach you in whatever way that plays out So let's get some messages directly from spirit. Okay, so I'm just going to clear this stuff off here. I'm going to move these over though, just so that we keep them on the screen for you. There we go. All right. Let's get some messages from Spirit. Okay. Spirit, what guidance do we have for Pile 3? Oh, it just flew right out. We have the Six of Wands, the Seven of Cups, the Death card, the Son of Swords, Can get one more spirit. We have three more. The five of cups. Let me put this here. I'm gonna move this up. The sun card. And below that we had the three of swords. Okay. So don't don't don't. It's fine. You're fine. It's okay. The Three of Swords is not as bad as as what everybody makes it out to be. Um, honestly, I think the Three of Swords is is more so for me a card of healing. It's it's a card of of knowing that it's time. So what I'm getting here is there is this victory that you have shifted into that you don't understand, you don't see because you haven't moved completely out of it, which makes way more sense for these questions, but also for the solfeggio frequencies. You are on your journey back. So 
you're on your journey back and spirit really wants you to know that this is your victory here like you have overcome this what you have overcome is this destroying yourself time and time again over the choices that you've made in in your life feeling as though you have to shove who you are down and and allow for other people to shine above you and allowing yourself to be small to be a portion of who you are just like the crescent moon to be a portion of what you truly are what you truly contain you have learned you are you have been victorious over allowing for these choices that you've made in the past that didn't work out and and that have pushed your light down to really tangle you up and and make it feel as though there are literal swords in your heart so the three of swords usually has a heart with three swords stabbing through that it's like third time's a charm is what you thought and then third time wasn't a charm third time was the what i just heard was final nail in the coffin which makes perfect sense because now we moved into the death card we moved into the death card which means there is a a rebirth occurring for you the death card is not it, it's not about death it's about realizing when something has reached its end point when a part of you has reached its end point when it's time for you to transform and transmute and be born again and be different and be who you are because when you go through this this is your integration and assimilation and so spirit really really genuinely wants you to focus on that because you have successfully moved yourself through allowing any and every choice to be something that twists you up and destroys you emotionally because you've learned how to not have it do that but you've also learned how to listen to yourself instead of listening to the monkey mind that is what ha was causing you pain and you realize that it doesn't matter what decision you make it doesn't matter what choice you make it matters if you move from your heart if you move from your inner light if you move from knowing and from listening to spirit and being guided then you are moving where you need to be and that is why you have this victory over these situations you have been victorious over the situations of really tearing yourself up over this option or that option or this option or that option and you chose a path and as soon as you choose a path <laughs> you have to go through a death and rebirth cycle and that's my opinion other people may have something different but that's my opinion you have to go through a death and rebirth cycle because you have to shed from you the parts of you that are not aligned with this path the parts of you that would hinder you moving forward on your path and if you look those parts are crucial because if you if you allow for the patience for this to occur what you're moving into is the son of swords is also known as the knight of swords it's about rapid communication it can be hasty but when it's an owl bringing the sword in an owl can see all directions an owl is a symbol of wisdom it's a symbol of hidden knowledge it's a representation of athena and i believe tied to perhaps it's freya i could be wrong because i know she's cats but i'm pretty sure freya is also tied to owls um but it is a symbol of wisdom of knowing of inner knowing it's also tied to the high priestess card this owl coming in with a sword it's helping to bring forth messages that are clear that are concise that are rapid that are understandable that cut straight to the straight to the cutting to the chase is what i heard cutting to the chase and and it helps you shine who you truly are out into the world now the sun card is literally the happiest card in the deck I, I, I really think that the Ten of Cups is the happiest card in the deck, but I'm a fire and water sign, so I really like emotional fulfillment. But the Sun card is emotional fulfillment. It's also about peace. You can see these birds flying in every direction. That is all directions of your life. 
will be finding peace, will be finding harmony, will be finding balance because you're going to learn how to be a messenger or you're going to learn how to cut to the chase of what happened to move in the way on the path that is right for you. And in doing so, what I'm seeing, this is so weird. I Normally I wouldn't read it like this, but what I'm seeing here is what you're moving into is a phase of your life in which your true self shines forth regardless of the words or the actions of others and you literally shine a light on the the hardships going on within someone the things that they have that are holding them back the things that that they are struggling to deal with. Some of you may be looking into like going into counseling or therapy, becoming a therapist, becoming a life coach, a spiritual coach, um, something of that sort. You may be looking at, uh, I just heard children's books, like writing children's books to uplift other people to understand that we all go through this phase, this sadness phase, this phase of loss without being able to see what we we still have you're going to be shining a light on on what it's like to endure that what it's like to move through it what it's like to heal that what it's like to embrace that part of the journey to truly embrace that part of the journey and then to move forward and the messages that you bring forth in whatever way you do like I know that as a channeler, it can be misconstrued that, oh, maybe I need to be a channeler because she's channeling and she's saying I'm going to bring messages forth and that's how I do it. Don't misconstrue this. How you bring messages forth is going to be specific to you. You could be sitting in, in a therapy office as a therapist working with someone and helping them move through it using literally your logical mind, but the experience that you just had is going to color what your logical mind will tap into. In that way, you're bridged of you're acting as a bridge for your logical and your intuitive mind, but you're doing it in a way that is I just heard the word palatable, palatable for people who aren't on a spiritual journey yet or don't realize that we're all on a spiritual journey, I should say. But essentially, because you've learned how to overcome this, because you've learned how to see the success through a different lens that you have gone on, you've been able to understand that it doesn't matter what choice we make. It only matters that we move from the heart. And if you let yourself be in this kind of slowdown state, this death state, let yourself be transformed. Let yourself be cleansed by the fire. This is what you're moving into. How you utilize that, that's up to you. Like, And that, that definitely plays into these questions that were asked. You know, how, if you could take a dose of Felix Felicis, how would you use your run of good luck? What would you do? Have you ever had to deal with an authority figure, a teacher, a boss, a parent who abused their authority like Professor Umbridge? What sort of acts of resistance did you take to handle the situation? These are these are contemplations that you can make that you can utilize moving forward. You never know. If you allow yourself to sit in contemplation of certain things that you normally wouldn't, there are things that can awaken within you that may seem completely unconnected but are really deeply connected. Oh, your cards flew away. So we have fox and then we have the golden egg so fox is fox is this cunning creature however i love foxes i really do and i think that they they are perceived inaccurately so a fox can can let you know in this case with with how the cards fell the fox falls under the illusions, the way that we trick ourselves into believing that we don't have any personal power when we come up against a phase in which we have to make a decision that is a difficult decision to make. We don't know which way is up and the seven of the seven of cups can be a, a card of illusions. We have all these choices and all these decisions and it can be chaos and mayhem and 
and we don't see necessarily what's hidden in the cups and there could be something good or there could be something bad we don't know we're not sure so this is letting you know that sometimes you t tangle yourself up in your mind and it's never about the choice but it's about what your mind does when you have to make a choice now, the fox, on the other hand, I mean, I don't know if you know the Elvis song, What Does the Fox Say? I don't know a single person in the world who doesn't know that song. But to me, I think about foxes and I think about how they laugh and, and what it sounds like and how they're painted in this light by, you know, symbolism but they're such loving, beautiful creatures. And then I I just heard Todd from uh, The Fox and the Hound. And, you know, Todd got a bad rep too, but that's because of a farmer. And sometimes we have to close our eyes to the way that, that other people say these things are and allow ourselves to engage with it in a different way. Maybe the fox is asking you to lighten the way that you approach making a decision. Maybe the fox is saying that that is where your victory was. You lightened the approach in making a decision. You said, you know what? I'm just going to do it because it sounds fun. It sounds like I would enjoy it. I'm just going to go. Or, you know what? I'm curious, so I'm going to find out. I don't know if it's going to pan out, but I'm curious, so let's do it. Now, the golden egg is associated with the heart chakra. It is the essence of who we are. And you have that here on this card. You've got the the circle of light in the heart chakra the sun is who you are shining out into the world so this is saying that whatever whatever it is that you choose to do however you choose to teach this to share this to help others or to even just help yourself through this it's going to help immensely with you moving forward from the heart your heart chakra is front and center with all of this it is it is designed here or <laughs> design there's a design on it um triangles and and whatnot and i'm looking at the design and whatever but your heart chakra is oh that makes more sense your heart chakra is formed based off of the design that you and spirit sat down with like what you contain within your heart within your soul is something that you and spirit agreed to and you're learning what that entails and you're learning how to bring that forth because there's no there's no short way of going on this kind of journey when you have to overcome your mind to connect to your heart there's no short way to do that you get to take a break <laughs> more than anything i just feel like you get to take a break and here we go We've got the card 33 with the mountain. And you guys are pile three. And we have the card 63 with venom. So 33 and 63. We've got 963. Um, three times three is nine. So this is your crown chakra. This is the venom card talks about the poison the things that we put within the things that we put inside of ourselves or the things that we listen to that are poison but what this is telling me is that the the antidote for the venom is literally the mountain and the mountain is about what you have within you now it does not escape me that i picked up the hobbit and we have the mountain and I heard the Misty Mountains. So maybe you need to watch The Hobbit. There may be something in there for you. But the Venom card, the Venom card is like, it, well, it's, it's like the Three of Swords with the Seven of Cups. This is your Venom and the antidote is, is the mountain. It's what you contain within. It's that that little circle light in your center it's the golden egg it's the sun it and and right now you're going through a phase where you're learning how to utilize what you've learned in the mountain to get rid of the venom the other thing the venom card talks about that just popped into my awareness is the venom card talks about i think it is shiva 
I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. I don't want to pull the book out. But it talks about having to suck the venom out, but having to hold the venom in in the mouth. It's one of the gods, I believe one of the Hindu gods, had to hold the venom in the mouth in order to transmute it and turn it into nectar. So in this way, spirit is saying, go within before you take steps into the outside world. Because when you move with these this sun of swords energy you want to be moving from the sun and the, and the golden egg you want to be moving from a happy healthy heart-centered place and that is why there's this firm call and you can feel it you can feel it in your crown chakra this tingles and pressure and kind of dizziness and and lightheadedness that makes you want to just sleep that's your crown chakra trying to work through the venom it's holding in it because it's time for you to let yourself be reborn into the new you i'm seeing a snake i know it's not on the board but i'm seeing a snake and shedding of the skin it it's time for a new phase it's time for a new phase but before you can go into a new phase you need to learn how to get more connected to yourself learn how to meditate in whatever way works for you but allow for these changes to occur and know that as you move through it, your your mind may still try and, and trick you. But you've already had victory over that once. You've already emerged from the chrysalis as the butterfly. And so you can do that again. Some of you may want to go horseback riding, I just heard. If you want to go horseback riding, it would be very, very good for you. And you should check into your local area to see if there's any farms or or ranches or anything like that. I don't I I'm not really sure, but check into being able to do that. Um, that is a divinely guided inspiration for you. And it didn't come out of out of nothing. It came because it was it, it's calling to you for a reason. And you'll learn the, the reason when you go on the horseback ride. So that, that may be a very specific message for like one person or that may apply to multiple people who just, it's, been, it's a collective wave that runs through. I don't know because it didn't hit me until I was sitting here. So pile number three. You guys are, you guys are amazing. Like amazing, amazing. I want to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you for going on the journey you went on thank you for coming back thank you for taking your time thank you for being patient thank you for going through this death and rebirth so that you can shine your light more beautifully into the world because your light matters thank you thank you thank you for being an example for me and for others thank you i want to say thank you to spirit thank you to your guides and my guides for facilitating the connection and thank you so much definitely thank you to spirit for these beautiful messages for the guidance, the clarity, and the help that we all are able to receive. And thank you for my gifts that I am able to share with the collective. I am ever so grateful all the time. Thank you. Pile three, if this resonated, please hit the like button, share it out, subscribe to my channel, hit the little notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you check down in the description box, you're going to see links to my author page on Amazon, to my program um, with a 75% off coupon. And you, there are also links to donate and or book a personal reading with me. With me! So I am going to leave you here. Thank you again. I love you all. I will see you next time. Mwah. Bye! Hello, Pile 4. If you chose the fourth card, you chose the card number 30 with I Am Presence. And before we get into the messages, I want to open with setting an intention. Spirit and Spirit Guides for Pile 4. I set the intention for empowerment, for clarity, for guidance and for opening and clearing of the crown chakra for pile four. Thank you. 
Okay, pile four. Let's talk. So the I am presence, um, it's a common concept in the spiritual community. We talk about spirit, the universe, your higher power, your higher self as I am. And it is an all-encompassing kind of I am. However, one big thing about this I am presence is knowing that you are connected with the higher realms, knowing that you are connected to spirit, knowing that you are blessed, you are gifted, you are truly part of the whole. And every part of the whole is absolutely necessary in order for the whole to be whole, which means you are important. You may have been struggling with actually feeling present a lot of the times. And I get the sense that you've had a crown chakra opening recently. And it has made you kind of floaty. Your your head has felt almost... Um, I'm seeing a balloon being blown up by helium. And you think that it's going to pop. But it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the bigger it gets, the more there's this sense of like, what do I do? How do I stop it? What? One of the biggest advice or guidance that I am feeling right now is let it fill and allow yourself to find an outlet. Um, Spirit, can you help me explain this? Okay, so I will have times where my crown chakra will get very pressurized. And it's not exactly like having a headache. It's There's a lot of crown pressure. It will feel as though the top of my head is, is being pushed up. Not that there's something being pushed down on my crown, but there's something being pushed up through it. And... In those moments, I know that I need to go and rest. I need to sleep. I need to give myself a break. I just saw 3.33 on my clock. You guys may be seeing repeating threes. You may be getting messages from the Ascended Masters. And that may be the, the pressure that you feel. This is divine guidance coming in for you. And we all find our own ways of of creating an outlet for this so as much as i'd like to sit here and be like yeah i totally like i feel that pressure and then i just go to town writing or i sometimes and and this is this part is true sometimes i will feel that pressure and i will know it's time for me to do a reading for you guys and i will come here and and as i channel the pressure will slowly dissipate because i know that i am receiving messages that are for me to share other times, especially when there's a lot of confusion that goes along with the crown pressure, um, for instance, my mind will start going in circles about thought processes and, and what it is that I'm doing in the world and what it is that I'm producing and, and where I'm at versus where I see myself at, things of that nature. In those moments, I know that I am about to go on a self-discovery journey. So I allow for that pressure to come in. I, you know, I let my family know, hey, this is what I am feeling. This is how I am feeling. I'm going to need X amount of time for downtime before I am able to engage in, you know, any kind of adequate communication because it does kind of tie up my my ability to communicate when I'm done usually I end up sitting down and doing some sort of research I will allow myself to be led on a path for something that I need to learn about myself something I need to learn about my journey about my gifts about anything whatever whatever it is that applies at the time and as I was preparing for your pile you're the first pile that didn't have some sort of channeled song movie um anything like that 
it was straight up mindfulness, empowerment, gifts, focus on the self, focus on the self. Let's alleviate this. It is not what I would normally expect from an from the I am presence card. However, you may be in a stage in your life where right now you're learning how to focus on you. You're learning how to discern what is for you and what is for other people. You're learning to empower yourself from a life of being downtrodden. And that's okay. That's why you're here. Because you're here because spirit led you here so that we can work together to bring illumination, to bring insight, and to bring clarity, and to give you tools to move forward. So we're going to start with the empowering questions. I'm going to read them. I am not going to divine them. Those are for you to work through because even if it's just a simple contemplation, you don't have to do any journaling if you don't want to, or perhaps it will trigger something within you for you to find an outlet based off of the questions and the reflection principle of it. These questions are for you. So I'll, I will read them and then if you want to screenshot the screen so that you have them for your reference, please feel free. So we'll start up here and we have, who am I? Yes, see, this is, yeah, <laughs> I wasn't going to divine it. Who am I? Okay. How have I become me? What am I like? Wow. Spirit's coming in hot and fast for you guys. How would I want people to remember me when I'm no longer here? Okay. All right. Like I said, I'm not going to divine these as tempted as I am because they're, it, it's pretty clear to me, but I'm not the one that needs the clarity. Like, if I can see it, it's not for me to see. It's for you to see. So we're working with the I am presence. These are the questions that spirit wants you to reflect on to help alleviate that pressure. And there can be a lot of fear with that. Don't allow fear to, to hinder you focusing on you here. So let's take a look at the mindful messages. So we have... Commitment. I am committed to my growth and dreams. I set routines and habits that help me evolve into my fullest potential. Even though I may not see the physical manifestation of my desires, I know they have vibrationally manifested and are on their way to me. Okay. Then we have edge of greatness. The universe is opening doors for me, bringing opportunities my way. I don't crumble at the edge of my greatness. I take the opportunities that come and walk through the doors with confidence. Casting spells. The words I speak and the stories I tell are like spells. What I say and believe I attract more of. So I shift my story from lack to abundance, from victim to empowered, and from complaint to gratitude. Now when I speak to others through my words, I am casting beautiful spells. Loving space. I cannot learn other people's lessons for them. They must get there themselves at their own time. I can simply hold loving space for them as they go through their journey. I love that because that last card is, <laughs> it's literally what I was saying about these cards and me not divining them as I'm here holding space for you guys. I cannot teach, I can, I can teach you some of my lessons but I can't teach you your own. You have to find them yourself. Much of, of your pile in specific is 100% about you. It's about the stories that you tell yourself, the allowances that you make for yourself, the truth and the beauty and the commitment and the dedication that you put towards yourself and what you want, what is right for you. And in order to do that, one of the biggest things that I have learned is that in order to do that, you have to be able to know you and know you on both a physical and a divine level. Knowing there's this saying that I am, I am an immortal soul having a mortal existence or I am an eternal soul 
having a human existence or something along those lines. I can't, I can't remember how it goes, but it's along those lines. Now, with that, there, when you realize the spiritual aspect of life, identity crises come up and questions of your worth, questions of your legacy, questions of how, how others perceive you, how you perceive yourself, all of that come into play. It's also about the way that you speak to yourself, the way that your mind talks to you, the way that you allow yourself to consider what you're here for and whether you can overcome. So I spent a lot of time in a state of lack, in a state of, well, I'm doing all of this. Why isn't it getting me anywhere? It's not getting me anywhere because I don't have full faith in it. So I still struggle with that today. But that doesn't mean that I am not 100% aware of just how abundant our universe is. And because I struggled with it so much and, and, and had to learn it in a kind of kicking and screaming manner, the universe had to slam me in the face with it. It, it literally had to show me how abundant it was in the way that I communicate. I communicate through learning. I just saw one, two, three, four. So it's about progression here. I, and that is a beautiful thing for what I'm talking about. I learn, I communicate through learning, through, through reading, through listening to music, but also through science. And I fought that aspect of myself for a very, very, very long time, especially when I opened up to spirituality because science and spirituality do not always mix. And I, I love science. That's, that's why my channel is Chemistry with Kismet. It's, it's multifaceted in, in and of itself in a name. I actually was planning on doing like a reading on it or, or a video explaining it. I may still do that, but chemistry is a huge passion of mine psychology is a huge passion of mine astronomy is a huge passion of mine so is astrology all of these are scientific in nature and i believed for a very long time that it was either or you're either scientific or you're not you are either scientific or you are spiritual and i had to learn that if i am to embrace all of who I am, I have to embrace every aspect of the things that I love that I contain within me. So I would get to the edge of making a change, taking a leap, doing something different, anything. I would come to the edge of that and believe so strongly in myself. And then I would hold myself back. I would self-sabotage. I do all of these things. I don't do that anymore because I had to learn that every aspect of who I am is within me for a reason. And when I committed to myself, to my self-growth, to essentially reparenting myself and reteaching myself how to speak to myself and how to view the world and how to view science and scientific principles and psychology and religion and theosophy and philosophy and spirituality and all of it in a more inclusive manner. When I did that, I stopped telling the stories of me not being abundant, of me not being worthy. I started telling the stories of the lessons that I learned through the journey that I took. At the core, this is about knowing that when you commit to yourself, when you start telling yourself the story of who you are in a, in, in a sense of I am and you harness the I am knowledge, the I am presence that is existent in your crown chakra, that's when you start really stepping into who you are, how you are, what your worth is, and you learn how to hold space for yourself first and foremost, and then hold, self, hold space for other people. But you don't try to dictate. You don't try to control. You don't try to have power over anyone. You don't try and 
determine how their path is going to go and what their journey needs to be, you simply hold space for them because you know that no one could have told you where to go to get to where you are. You had to get there yourself. So let's take a look at these. These are Divination of the Ancients. I had to double check the name of the Oracle. <laughs> so we have Wheel of Fortune and Fate. And Scrying Mirror with Projection. Yes. Okay. So the Projection card here and this Loving Space. So there's a difference between Projection and Reflection. There are times where we have to realize when someone is projecting their opinion, their belief of us onto us, or when we are projecting our own lack out into the world. However, with the scrying mirror, there's also the, the concept of reflection, which means that instead of projecting a shadow outward, we can be openly receptive to having the world reflect back to us that which we contain within. Projection is like um, a skewed divine masculine energy versus reflection, which is a healthy divine feminine energy. When you balance those two energies, and you know the funny thing is, is I was literally thinking, it's kind of strange. This has been a common theme through the collective and through all my readings, this divine masculine, divine feminine energy thing. And I haven't seen it in any of my piles for this reading. And now I do. <laughs> so when you balance those out, when you, you bring those into balance, people can't project onto you, but you also don't project outward onto anyone else. You just know your worth. And then you come to the world knowing who you are and the world ends up reflecting that back to you. We can see uh, our situations as fate. Again, we're coming back to chemistry with kismet because kismet is destiny and fate. Um, and it escapes me every time. I, I usually get them confused, but I believe that destiny is something that we head towards that is predetermined and fate is is something that we engage with but we have no control over I could be mixing them up of course um let me know in the comments if you go in and look them up but a lot of the time these are th seen as things that we just we don't have full control over we may be moving pieces like like I'm seeing a chessboard we may be pieces on the chessboard or we may initiate certain changes to make the wheel of fortune turn either in our favor or or not but most of the time if the wheel of fortune is turning it's it's in our favor <laughs> i i haven't seen it otherwise so this is a take that as a very good sign because if the wheel of fortune is turning it's turning in your favor and that's a beautiful thing but we can see this as being completely out of our control or we can see that I am. You contain the I am presence within. You contain the connection to spirit, the connection to your higher self, which means I am blessed. I am whatever it is that you want to finish that with. I am empowered. I am seen. I am blessed. I am loved. I am prosperous. I am gifted. I am worthy i am chosen to be a success i am loved i am divine i am present whatever it is that feels right for your i am when you hold to those truths that's when you start bringing those this casting spells energy out it it doesn't fall under the guise of projection anymore it is the reflectionary principle from there you are saying these amazing things you may be telling you may even be telling stories that seem in nature to be negative but the thing is is when they come from a whole and healthy place in this understanding of the i am presence and and you allow your crown chakra to be open and to share the messages from an open crown chakra share these stories when you do that then 
everyone sees you as you see yourself, but you have to see yourself in your truth first. Right now, it feels as though you are on the edge, but not on the edge of greatness. It's like you're on on the edge of losing control, on the edge of breakthrough, on the edge of divinity, on the edge of understanding, on the edge of changing changing on the edge of destiny there 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 there's a lot of energies that are on the edge here but it's not a bad on the edge it it's your you've shifted over so you see this little guy on the top of the wheel of fortune if the wheel moves and he doesn't move his feet with the wheel he's going to come to the edge of the wheel and then he's going to fall off the wheel in that way, maybe you feel as though you've been running on on like a hamster wheel or running on a treadmill. I'm seeing a hamster in my head. I used to have hamsters when I was a kid. Anyway, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. You may feel as though you've been running on this wheel. You, you're running and you're running and you're running, but there are there are posts. It's whole. It's in place. You're running in place. You are are doing the same thing over and over and over again. And, and <laughs> I just heard um, insanity. The The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. You have to change something up. Even if it's just something small, change it up. Sometimes we get into this habit of not realizing that we're running on this wheel because we're stuck in, in the projection of negativity. We're stuck in other people's projections. We're stuck in our own projection field. And we're not able to see that we are divinely connected. We are being divinely guided. We are being divinely spoken to. And when we allow ourselves to have this crown chakra opening, and I feel as though you are in the in the middle of it opening, like truly opening. When we're in the middle of that, all of the different projections, the ones that we have put on other people, the ones that have been put on us, all of that comes to light. I have been there. I was there two years ago. It's hard. It's hard to deal with. It's hard to face. Um, sorry, guys. I'm drinking coffee because um, with your pile specifically, I feel very floaty. So I'm, I'm trying to keep myself grounded as much as I can during this reading. Um, when, when we come to this space, when our crown chakra opens, when we become aware one of the hardest things we have to face is ourselves. We have to face the the moments in which we've given other people our power. We have to face the power that we have taken from others. We have to face the mistakes that we've made. But we also are being gifted with this understanding that we're on a spiritual journey. And sometimes we awaken when we awaken. There's no predicting when we're going to awaken because it is when we are meant to. It's when our soul is contracted to and we can't predict it. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can have an inkling of it, but you can't always predict it. I never would have guessed that in 2020 I would go through a massive spiritual awakening. I never would have guessed that I would go through this a second time around the way that I did back in 2011. I just wouldn't have. I would not have fathomed that because I was not at a place internally in my life in which it was even comprehensible. I was in the middle of, of chaos and mayhem. Um, for more on that story, shameless self-plug, go and check out my book, Something Spiritually Catchy, which is available on Amazon, link down in the description box. Anyway... We're going to move along from that. Um, I I usually save my shameless self plugs until the very end. But that book, that book I do talk about this exact space that I was in. How hard it was and how how different things were for me. And that that understanding of other people's projections that I had to go through it left me <laughs> it left me going on this running on a hamster wheel journey and i didn't realize that i was running on a hamster wheel until i got to the end and i was like why the heck am i doing this why am i doing this 
And I had to learn how to recommit to myself because I was committed to doing the same thing in a different way. I had to break down who I was on on so many levels. I had to face so many things. So you're not alone in what you're dealing with. You're not alone in how you feel. You're not alone in the questions that you're asking yourself and the challenges that spirit is bringing forth for you today. This who am I? I am. How have I become me? What am I like? I am. How would I want people to remember me when I'm no longer here? I am. Use this I am presence to help you understand. Now, the one thing that I will say, and I know I said I wasn't going to divine these cards, but it, it came into my head, um, and there has to be a correlation with you guys. Otherwise, spirit would not have brought it to the forefront of my mind. I want to say it was back in October of last year, maybe November. I'd ha I, I don't remember definitively, but when Clickbait, it's a, a mini-series. When Clickbait came out on Netflix, I spent an entire day watching the whole, the whole thing. Uh, I was at a point on my spiritual journey where I really, really wanted to go back. I wanted to go back to being able to watch TV. I wanted to go back to being able to engage in, in life and be present. But there was a scene in that movie that equally brought out a lot of frustration for me <laughs> because I was at the point of like, can I just, can I just watch something on TV without learning a spiritual lesson? Like, can I get a break and just like enjoy something? But at the same time, it's the lesson that's tied to the card that is being brought up now. So without trying to, w without giving too many spoilers in case you haven't watched it and you want to watch it, in this show, somebody, go, somebody goes missing, they post it online and it's a timer and, and it's, you know, a psychological thriller. But one of the characters says, the last time I saw my brother this was our conversation and she goes into detail with it with a person that she's talking to and she said what if that's the last conversation i have what if that is my last memory that i have and that sorry that struck me because i know that feeling i've been there i felt that because you don't know when your life is going to end. You don't know when someone else's life is going to end. You don't know. So you get to this point where you are having to face your own mortality. Understanding that you're an immortal soul inside a mortal body. And you have to face your own mortality. Do you want to be remembered as someone who came here and and leaped owned all of who they are the good the bad the ugly every aspect owned it shared it stood proud in it sh beamed that part of you out into the world without it being fake without it being some mask but the truest nature of who you are both human and divine how, for me, that's that's absolutely what I want. I want people to see that I have wisdom, but I also stumble on my words and and swear. And and I'm not a I'm not a perfect person, but I believe that perfection is in the eye of the beholder. So I love myself for who I am. I think I'm pretty freaking awesome. Thank you very much. I think you're pretty awesome too. You just have to get there yourself. And I truly believe you will get to this point yourself. You will see it for yourself. So let's let's get some direct messages from Spirit here. All right. We're just going to take these down. And I was going to take these down, but Spirit said no. So we're just going to shift them a little bit so we have a little bit more room. All right, Spirit, do we have any additional guidance or what additional guidance can we give for Pile 
four moving forward as they go through this crown chakra opening. Um, if anybody here did not did not um, watch the intro, if you go back to the intro, I actually walk you through opening your crown chakra in a in a very simple few step process and it is something that you can duplicate that might help with the pressure that you're feeling but we start with the hermit and then we have um the strength card and you know the thing that hits me with the hermit is it's the card nine so you have ix on the top and then you have strength with xi so the card 11 and the strength card is usually card eight but not in this deck it's card 11 so we do have that reflection principle then we have the Mother of Wands or the Queen of Wands. The Justice <laughs> card, which is the card 8 and usually the card 11. Um, a lot of this is about projection and reflection. A lot of it. Because you've got the Black and the White and the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine. You've got the Reflection Principle between the Hermit and the Strength card. And you have literally the scrying mirror with projection. So we do have a lot of um, learning how to see see the truth of who you are and allowing the world to show you the truth of who you are as well. Okay, can we get one more for pile four? Spirit, can we get one more for pile four? Where do they want to go from this justice? I feel like there's another one in here. Spirit. Okay, pile four. There we go. All right, we have the Father of Pentacles. And I did, I do want to mention, um, on the back we have the Hierophant, but I did see, I'm going to put this over here. I did see um, the Five of Wands. And there's the Five of Pentacles. So there is some change coming in for you. There is some change coming in for you. Um, the Hermit card talks about an inner journey. It's about discovering your inner light. And that is the basis of the I Am Presence. It's it's your inner light, your, your inner self, your inner knowing, but your inner worth, your inner wisdom, all of that. The strength card is that card that is balancing your animalistic or your um, reactionary nature with the outside world. It also represents Leo energy. Um, you may have Leo in the 11th house. So this could be talking about um, you being strong with your friends, but also being strengthening your hopes and your dreams for your life by learning who you are by learning how to reflect your light into the world and coming forward in strength the hierophant being on the back of the deck is it's literally what you don't see about yourself is you hold the key to your own wisdom you hold the key to your own enlightenment you hold the key to doing all of this and that is contained within the hierophant card who is also known as the spiritual teacher the pope the leader you are your own leader but you're also here to lead However that plays out, you may um, be called to psychology, you may be called to divination, you may be called to astrology, to tarot readings. You guys are definitely my highly spiritual pile. And there's this aspect of what you need to discover within the hermit is why you're running from it. What within you is pulling you away from it? Because we've got the mother of wands that is literally the central piece, the central figure, which is your center, is the Mother of Wands. That is, the, the Queen of Wands is the woman who sits in her power, sits on her throne, sits with a black cat in front of her. When, when the tarot was made, the black cat was seen as a bad omen, and she's just like the honey badger. She don't give a F. But in this sense, she is protecting her eggs. She is protecting what she has created. She is protecting her her babies, her future, her worth. She knows who she is and what her worth is. And she protects it. But she doesn't hide away or shy away from the world. She lets herself shine. So this is knowing that you have protection, that you are protected, and that the things that you want to create and to build in this world are yours to do so. They're your babies. Even if, 
I mean, you may be pregnant. <laughs> That's for very minimal because I don't even see the Empress card out here and I don't feel the Empress energy. But I've, there's something that you consider near and dear much like you would a child. With the Justice card, it's literally finding balance between you and the outside world. Finding balance between your inside world and your outside world. Finding balance in your chakras and in your truth. And knowing that when you come forward in a balanced manner, your truth is not cutting. It's just true. And the Father of Pentacles is about getting yourself grounded into the world. So this is literally saying you have all of this within you. This is, these are all aspects of your I am presence. You contain all of this within you. All you have to do is learn how to harness that and believe in it. The time is going to come. What I'm hearing is the time is going to come when you are going to be called out of your hermit phase. Um, we have the gazelle and the crocodile. See? The time is going to come when you are going to be called out of your hermit phase. And it is okay to show the world your elegance. Show the world your truth. The crocodile here. Okay. I'm not at all surprised to see the crocodile. I was watching a, uh, an astronomy video about the end of dinosaurs and, and kind of a scientific recreation of it. And they talked about the fact that the only thing that, that lived in that were water sea creatures were crocodiles and sea turtles because they could get far enough down and they could survive it crocodile is about holding back and and recharging and regrouping and cooling off and seeing all of what's going on before moving forward but a crocodile is incredibly protective and incredibly protected now in this aspect I want you to think about what I said. The dinosaurs were all killed. Our planet was like consumed in a fiery ball for years. <laughs> there was acid rain. There, it, there were like three islands on, in the world that there was any kind of survival possible. And that is, dis that, that is discounting the acid rain and, and the widespread fires and constant tsunamis and earthquakes and chaos and mayhem but crocodiles survived all of that the crocodile is coming in to show you your own strength that you're discovering within yourself is your ability to literally survive the worst of the worst of the worst and come out the other side come out the other side empowered come out the other side strong come out the other side determined balanced steady, graceful, elegant, and the gazelle moves super fast, like super fast. A gazelle can outrun a lion. So, and it does that in a beautiful way. I just keep hearing the word elegant. You have an elegance to you when you stand in who you are and when you own that within yourself you have this beautiful elegance to you. And that elegance is a balanced, grounded elegance here in the world. You ground the I am into the world. And it's so beautiful. And now is the time to allow the crown chakra to fully open, to, to let yourself see all of you. Everything you've been through, everything you've gone through, because this cool down phase is going to end and relatively soon. So we have the father, card number two, and we have the crone with card 13. And again, we have two ravens, so you may be seeing ravens or crows. But the crone, the father and the crone, the father is about breaking free from your parentage. It's about knowing what, what the archetype of the father is, that, that firm, strong nature that determined that kind of restrictive I mean you know a lot of us when we hear the father we think Saturn that's one aspect of it but it the father is also about learning how to grow and learn the lessons from it the crone talks about the triple goddess you've got the maiden the mother and the crone 
Now, the crone is the oldest, the third stage of the triple goddess. And in that third stage, she has all of the wisdom built up. She knows, she sees, she understands, she's connected. That's who she is. When you meld the father and the crone together, you're melding these awarenesses. Divine feminine, divine masculine, but matured divine feminine and divine masculine. And when you bring those matured aspects together... You truly do embody the Hierophant. And that's where you're headed. You just don't see it yet. Because you're still in this cooldown phase. And, and this cooldown phase can really be a challenge. It's very similar. What I'm feeling is a very similar to the void stage. The void phase where you've been working really hard. And you're, you're trying to manifest something. Or you're creating something. Or you have been on this self-healing journey. And not, all of a sudden you feel disconnected from spirit. From your emotions. From everything. And when you come back online from that stage. There's this flood of, of things that you didn't deal with when you were in it. The, the void stage is, is a beautiful place for you to handle your emotions. To look at your emotions. To feel through your emotions. To embrace your emotions. And to heal your emotional body, your mental body, your physical body by resting, by regrouping, and by getting in touch with yourself. Before you leave the void phase, take some time to ask yourself the hard questions about who you are and what your worth is and what you want to see in the world and how you want to be remembered and all of that. Really take the time to dig into those really hard questions that make you face your own mortality, that make you face your own humanity. Because you're, it's, it's learning how to, when you're teetering on the edge, learning how to be both spiritual and, and here in the physical world. Be grounded while, while being in the higher realms. It's learning how to balance all of those aspects together and still be you. And it, it takes time. It takes practice. And it takes a lot of trust. But you have this going for you. You have this opening for you. And Spirit is saying it's, it, it's safe now for, for you to really let yourself see. Change is coming. You can feel the change coming in. Let yourself mature through the change. And I'm seeing here we've got 2, 3, and then 13 reduces to a 4. And then we've got 5. So we've got 2, 3, 4, 5. That is progression. That is progress being made. You are making progress. <laughs> if we had a six and a seven on the board, guys, we'd, we'd be perfect. Um, because we've got a nine, an eight, a nine, and, a, and an eleven. But you can see there there's rapid growth occurring. There, it's, everything is moving as, it, as it's meant to. And... Whatever you are stepping into, whatever edge you're stepping off of, whatever trust you're putting in the divine and putting in yourself and putting in your path and your truth and your knowing and your I am presence, I just saw 4433, all you have to do is just, just move with the energy instead of against it. That's, that's moving into the flow. Move with the energy instead of against it. Know your truth and know your power and know that the story that you tell is one of upliftment, of empowerment, and it's meant for the world. It's meant for your life. It's meant for you, for you to harness, for you to know, for you to see, for you to understand, for you to trust in because you are the leader in your life. All right, pile number four. I wish you guys the absolute best. I want to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you to your guides and my guides for facilitating this connection. Thank you to Spirit for the, my gifts that I get to share with the world and the messages that I am able to bring forth to the collective for you as you move through me. And I want to say thank you one more time to you guys here in Pile 4. Thank you for your endurance, for your dedication, for your commitment to you, to your path, to your progress, 
to your own self-empowerment and to understanding who you are. You are an example. You are a leader. And I am honored to read your energy. Thank you. All right, Pile Fours. If this resonated, hit the like button. Share it out. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And down in the description box, you can check out my books. Like I said, I did a shameless self-plug earlier. Those are all linked to my Amazon author page. There's also links to my program um, and a 75% off coupon code good until June 1st. Links if you would like a personal reading, um, an extension of this at all. There are links to book personal readings with me down in the description box as well as links to donate to my channel. All right, Pile 4, I love you, love you, love you. I will see you again next time. Mwah. Bye.